that hey, you man. take care of. I heard a crazy, crazy story. How was your last born uh, conceived? Jesus, bro. That's a crazy, crazy story. <laughs> I don't know where you had the story. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering, man. Your dad, how he used to drive every day past you, but you only spoke to him when you were 18. Where do you get this thing? <laughs> I think fraud. I'd, I'll have to oh. check. I think. I think. Yeah. But you know fraud back then, you probably stole the pieces in the checkups. <laughs> so Even funerals. For me, a funeral is like people coming to confirm you're dead. Mm. Mm. There's very few funerals. I, no, think about it. How many people... Because living, man. celebrities think... They think there are celebrities everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, people that are known or well known. Henda, Abarimene, ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for one of my favorite comedians of all time, Sotendoka. We got a legend in the fucking yeah. building. Make some noise for David Ka. <laughs> ah, that's old school, dog. Nobody does that anymore. Anyway. Nobody does that way anything. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. Ah, come on. So, yeah. so I was, uh, I don't know how many years ago. Yeah. Because uh, people shouted out. Um, but it's also weird when you hear it in another country <laughs> and then it's like a South African or someone who's from South Africa and, or I'll get off, I got off stage in Cape Town, I think two weeks ago. And then someone says, you didn't say wah. <laughs> <laughs> you see? You see? So, but then you know where it comes from. So yeah. me and Quella Tibbs and them used to stay in this complex in, um, in Ilovo, in Athol. Mm. And these birds used to wake us up, oh. pretty much. Yeah, so that's why it used to be me, Tepo, and Tepo and them, the, the Quella brothers. Yeah. Who started, who used to do this thing all, like we'd be sitting in a cinema or a movie premiere. Just, <laughs> <"Hwank, hwank." laughs> that's where it came from. That's funny, And then man. it just caught on, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Now I get on stage, some people shout it out, and then it was, how do you spell it? Then I had to make up how you spell it. Which is H W E E E E E R R R R R R R R R. Yeah, it's not where, it's H W E E E E E. And then as many R's as you want to put. You know what it reminds me of? Like if you're playing in Paris and you're like, warning Allah, le makai. And then the one, two South African goes, asfudu la le makai. And then you go, How did you get first introduced to to David Kao? Uh, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was Fat Joe Show, Little yes. Brown Cow. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Almost a Piumanati. Yeah. Fat Joe Show. You had, yeah. you did skits there. Yeah. yeah. The TV show. The TV mm. show. Or not on the TV. radio. No, no, no. On TV. Me, it was Brown radio Cow. and Dada Man. Yeah. That's how I first so got introduced yeah, yeah, yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah, So the radio breakfast show. So I, I came for an interview. Um, I mean, I, so I started October 1998. I still lived in Cape Town. I graduated UCT end of '98, and then I had a gig. Did in, you did you graduate? Graduate? I thought you dropped I out. I started another degree. Even. Oh, I thought you dropped out. I dropped, dropped out. out of a second degree. Ah, yeah, because I you know I started traveling and doing gigs, mm. but I was staying in rest. So so I I started October '98, and then I had a gig in Brady River. I think January '99, and uh, so I go to Brady River. It's like an hour or two from Cape Town. Mm. And um, then I go back to Rez. Well, remember when you don't perform well at varsity, they have what they call, uh, you have to rewrite your exam or whatever, yeah. summer school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people start attending in Jan. Subs. Sub, subs. Supplementary. Yeah, supplementaries, yeah. right? Yeah. So a whole bunch of my school mates, Rez mates were there, but they only open Tagwell and uh, Marquardt at mm. UCT. And everyone is there. But I didn't have accommodation. Right, because I didn't live in Cape Town. I just went for a gig. Mm. So I registered for another degree because I don't know now. Back then, as long as your previous year school fees is paid, mm. you can register again uh, for another year. Mm -hmm. So I registered so that I can get back into res and have accommodation. And then I started staying. 
Hashtag is king. That's when I. That's how I ended up after graduating uh, my performance speech and drama, and then I registered for media studies. Yeah. And then, but I was doing gigs. You know, I was in house com uh, until a few years ago. All the TVs and the Mnet account at Clarin and House were still in my name. Wow. Because we were in house com then, and I was the entertainment rep mm. for that year. And then I I wouldn't have had a place to stay. So I stayed in Rares up until maybe June, July. And then I left and I could afford my own place. I went to stay in Newlands or something. But, but tell me about your first uh, stand-up comedy bit that you did. I heard you were standing in front of a store pretending to be Michael Jackson or something like that. That's how I bought my my first cell phone, my Nokia Whatever the ones you could take out the cover and put a different cover. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. 3310. So, 3310. Yeah, yeah. So, so someone comes to drama school and there was a new shop opening at Cavendish Square. It was called a mega music store. It was the biggest music store ever. Um, music warehouse or whatever it was called at the time. And they basically want people that are going to be bad musicians, right? And next to you, there's a board that says, if you want the real thing, go to the store at uh, Kevin. Okay. So they take a bunch of us or students. But my gig, UCT Jameson Hall, Jameson Steps in front of Jameson Hall. Yeah. Michael Jackson wig, the pants and everything. Socks and all. Everything. And that was my gig. So all you're doing, I'm standing there, I'm doing the thing, the <laughs> kick and the spin. <laughs> but that's the whole lunchtime. Right? <laughs> that's all I'm doing. Kick, spin. <laughs> <laughs> and then, that's like my gig. <laughs> and next to me, there's this board that says, if you want the real thing, come to this uh, music. Yeah. <laughs> and then, people, I mean, if you know, you used to teach and Steps, and students are always, especially lunchtime. Yeah. And then someone from my res went, David, go! <laughs> <laughs> but the money I made was maybe 700 rand. Wow. 750. So I went to town. I buy the cell phone. I don't even have the 250 to buy the recharge card just to receive. Mm, mm. And then I didn't even have money to go back to res. Mm. So there by Golden Acre, taxi rank upstairs there in Cape Town. I bump into someone I know who stays in res and I'm like, I need money to get back to res. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably in 250 or 750 that mm. I, I didn't have. Yeah, I took yeah, yeah. the money, I got paid, I bought this phone. And then I got back to Rez, and then obviously you still carry the stupid phone yeah. to go to a public phone, and then you look for the phone number. <laughs> Yo. But that was my one of my first paying gigs, I guess, in uh, in drama school. Yeah. So when do you meet uh, Fat Joe? So w when I started doing stand up in '98, mm -hmm. um, I came for an interview on the Fat Joe show at ETV. Okay. But I still lived in Cape Town. So I started in 98. I lived in Cape Town until 2000, June, July, when I when I moved to Joburg. So I came for an interview. That's when I met Sammy and Joe and uh, and and went to the show for the first time. And, you know, he was like, yeah, you know. Oh, wanna, he's you interviewing wanna... you because you're the no, first, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. first, black, the first comedian. black comedian, blah, blah, blah. Yes. That's how I met Joe. Joe, So we okay. did the interview. Mm, I get it. And then when he's in town or Cape Town, remember he came to Galaxy. You know Galaxy is one of the longest running clubs ever in Cape Town. I don't know if you guys know. Mm. Then he'd call me uh, Akin uh, Omotoso. Then we'd hang out, you know. So then we became friends. And then eventually I moved to Joburg 2000 um, in, uh, in June. Yeah. And the first gig I was doing was the Heavyweight Comedy Jam. It used to be called the J Thang 5FM Heavyweight Comedy Jam. With Alex J was the host. Alex J. Yeah, yeah. So this is my first gig ever in Joburg. Mm. Kalaga State, 3,600 people. Sheesh. Sheesh. It's myself, Al Projas, John Flesmas, Barry Hilton, Mal Miller. Yeah. I'm the only black, obviously. Then the only two black people in the entire venue or audience. Earlier that year, I met Maria McCloy and Kutuano in Grahamstown. And I said to them, hey guys, I'm moving to Joburg, blah, blah, I've got this gig. And they were the only other black, black people mm. in a comedy audience yes. at that time, in that venue. And that was my first gig ever in Joburg. Mm. Then I started working with... Uh, and you killed it, I'm, I'm assuming. Ah, dude, listen, 
me, you can put me anywhere in the world, any stage. If they understand English, will something will happen. Yeah. So how did you know you were ready though for that first gig? Didn't you have any other like smaller Nyana crowds? Z, so by then I had started headlining the Sminoff Comedy Festival in Cape Town, the International Comedy Festival in Cape Town at the Baxter. Mm. Used to be the second biggest in the Southern Hemisphere after Melbourne. Mm-mm. So that's where I met Jimmy Carr, Russell Peters. Whoa, you and bro, all this Jimmy Carr. Yeah, this, uh, we used to perform together. I used to take them around uh, wow. in, in, uh, in in Cape Town, hey. you know. So that, but that's where I met Russell Peters. That's why me and Russell Peters are so uh, close. Yeah. So close. Yeah, we've known each other. I guess now almost twenty years or more. Mm. So by then I'd been so ninety eight. Mm. I graduate, and then Emma Rez, who started her own agency, or she was starting her agency. So she comes to drama school. She's going to audition a few actors. And this is our final year in 98. Myself, uh, Conrad Koch. I went to school with Conrad Koch, Koch but he wasn't well. even uh, doing the, ventriloquism. The hand up no, no, no. He was yeah. just busy doing his degree. <laughs> oh. He so well. fell a year behind me. Oh, okay. Because, so, <laughs> so we met, me and Kakizo met 93, 94 in Mankey's Corp in Pretoria. This other block of flats, not far from the union buildings. And um, we wanted to make movies before we even knew we'd be stand-up comedians, right? And then he applied for architecture at UCT. I applied for engineering. Jeez. (laughs) (laughs) And I was comedian. (laughs) (laughs) And then, so one of my uncles changed my application uh, to drama, which is then you literally go to drama school every day. You're training to be an actor. Then we went to audition. So while we're in Pretoria, we go to what now we know as North Taxi Rank. Mm, okay. Um, no, but literally North, like, North, North Pretoria. Not Pretoria. No, I'm saying from Pretoria, we go to North oh, Taxi Rank. Oh, we went to auditions okay. at Vets for UCT. Ah, drama school. I they see, were just I see. held at Vets. Oh, okay, okay, I get you. I so get you. we go to this Taxi Rank where literally the Taxi Rank looks like, you know, that flood of buses uh, at Morea. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. But this is taxis, right? We've never seen this before. <laughs> you know, you, you, brah. And this, imagine this is 95, 90. Yeah, yeah 95. Jeez. So we go to the auditions. We go to the first round. They audition like 2,000 people. And then we go to the second round. And they take like 21 students out of that 2,000, right? So we get in. We get to campus in 96. Kajiso's application is still for architecture. <laughs> so that's how Kajiso fell behind me ah. at drama school. Ah. Because it's a separate degree. So then when I was in second year, he then started first, first year, year in the drama side. So uh, he just yeah, stayed yeah, doing yeah. the degree the first year. Mm. So, so me and Kajiso pretty much from... 94, 93, mm. you know. And then 96, we came up with the idea for the Pure Monati show. Mm. Wow. Yes. Wait, man, round of applause. For <laughs> yeah, man. 96. Ah, changed our lives. Yo. PMS changed Bro, our lives. That was gold, a TV dog. gold. It was popcorn and cheese, the original. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 96. Not this watered down shit. <laughs> 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 Mac is a hater. Eh? No, no, no. We got in trouble a lot because we were literally, honestly, I, people say it a lot. I haven't really said it, but now I guess we know. We were way ahead of our time. You were, man. Yeah, we bro. Were way yeah. ahead of our time. So then there's this document or paper, you know, 96, 97. Kakiso staying in uh, observatory. I'm staying in res. You know, with my, you can live, eat the whole year. What happens with school fees is, is another story, whether you have it or not. You know, so I stayed in Rez and Kahiso stayed in Diggs, you know, uh, sharing a house with some people, blah, blah, blah. And then we had this document, you know, of this TV show we wanted to. I don't know if you guys knew that time. So when ETV started and was launched, Wesley Snipes on this big yacht or ship, not mm. even a yacht, it was a big ship. Wow. Mm. Uh, ETV had this big party to launch ETV. Mm. So Wesley Snipes was in the mix, was a guest. And wow, da, 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 da. But when ETV, whatever programming they had, would end at whatever 10, 11 p.m., they had what they called dead time. Mm. And then they asked Abu Shalto Copley and uh, the guy who obviously was in District 9. And they were, yeah, the he, played Maddo, oh, yes. he played Maddo in the A-team. In the A-team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They used See to him. run dead time. Okay. Oh. And then we looked at doing skits there. Kahiso was very close to them. And uh, 
so we're, during that that time, we're now trying to put this pure Mulatti show thing and we want to do the sketches, blah, blah, blah. 2002, 2003, five, six years, Homoto Matsunyani was a commissioning editor at SABC. Um, I need to remember uh, someone else. Uh, Ro- Romeo Kumal was a station manager. Um, Seven Mulsa, I don't want to say Seven's surname wrong, but mm. they were in the commissioning team. And there's another woman I remember just now who find this document somewhere in a pile of shit oh, or wow. box of pictures and start calling us on some, yeah, can we talk about this thing? So this is now when I'm on the Fed Joe show and Kahiso is now also on the Fed Joe TV show. So I moved to Joe back in 2000 and we work together. Leo Mann is doing sports. When Leo leaves, Kahiso starts doing the sports on the Fed Joe show. Yeah. So maybe another year or two, Fed Joe leaves ETV and it's a big war and he says working there it's like Afghanistan. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Joe, Joe, before you continue, when you were on the morning show and 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 and, and on, the TV show yeah. with Fed Joe, yeah. um, how was it like? Like, did you come up with the skits? Did you have free reign to come up with the old skits? skits? Yeah. Or would you have to run it past him? Like, no. how, how's the working? So it's either he's sitting here and he goes, yo, this is what happened on the weekend, Sunday World, and I'm like, sharp, go in the studio, DJ Clear, was editing on the was the editor or yeah, know, the sound yeah, guy, tech sound, yeah. technical yeah. guy, yeah. And then we've got maybe sound clips that he got over the weekend from a gig. You know, there was a thing we did with Penny Levia anyway. She got so angry with us. <laughs> then that's where my Rata Helele came out. Good evening, the Quatale Matigazi. My name is Ntate Marata Helele. And then I would ask oh. questions as Marata Helele, and then we'll take your interview yes. and, and make up the answers. Oh. Yeah. But the bulk of it was me going to your CD. Today I've got with me Cabello, Mapala, <laughs> Pansola for life. Yeah. Ask a question, but the answer would be a lyric. Yes, part of the lyrics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that was then 2000, I guess. When I, which, which kid got you guys into shit? Because there were so many, man. But which one? There was a penny one, because it's like Cleo is interviewing you. You are at a launch or a thing, whatever. You know, back then in Joburg, Sunday World was, I think, coming up or starting out. And then we take your answers and... What did you do with the Penny thing? I don't even remember what we had said about Penny. But Penny has always been the one who's unhappy or angry or... (laughs) I once told a joke about Baba Lam Neno. Yeah. Which Baba Lam laughed at the time. Yeah. I think it was at the Saftas or something. Because, you know, back then people... Baba Laughing was dating Abedi Pele or or, uh, soccer player, international soccer player. By the way, for the 2000s, Baba Lam Neno is Babalicious on a way. Babalicious. Yeah, yeah, Babalicious. Yeah, yeah, Babalicious. Yeah, yeah. It's Babalicious. And um, so I tell a joke. I mean, this was stupid, you know, at the time. Um, you can imagine if this is 2000, 2001, two. I was emceeing the Saftas. Yeah. Um, and then I said... Um, I said, Bafana, Bafana. I said, Baba Ola is like Bafana, Bafana. She's always getting chowed by foreigners. This was, this was my... No, no, this was... No, this was my joke. This was my joke at the time. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. So, 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 I tell the joke and people laugh. Baba Ola is fine. She's in the audience. Penny gets to her radio show on Monday. Uh, and says, yeah, David, how could you? This is what David said. Uh, yeah, then yeah. Obviously, you're taking something out of context. Yes. And then it starts having a life of it. Uh, yes, 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 yes. That's so on brand for you know, me. And obviously, Baba Allah then starts feeling somehow as well. Uh, but I mean, me and Pops now, me and go way back, you know, <laughs> so many years. So, but anyway. Yeah, so um, SABC, yes, they see the paper. So, so SABC then finds this thing. So <laughs> if you watch the first, 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 Ever Pure Monati Show episode, season one. We even shot it outside the Fed Joe Studios in mm. Melville. Wow. 
uh, John Parker was acting as the SABC guy. So this is the skit. Whoa, the SABC guy. He's got an SABC van. He's giving us an SABC contract. <laughs> Yo, we've got a show. Then we do the whole skit. <laughs> but Kakiso is doing that. And then he calls me. I'm in a park. I'm chilling with twins, <laughs> which is Clema Wisa playing the twins. No, Clema Wisa is someone else, but yeah. they're both yeah. Afro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the way we shoot it is me, right? <laughs> Kakiso calls me, yo, we got a TV show. Mm-hmm. And I tell him, my babies, we've got a TV show. <laughs> my babies, we've got a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> but one of those people was clever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, man. Oh, that's beautiful, so, man. So that was the, the first, first, first ever, you know, when we got the Pio Monati show. Yeah. And then... So when I moved to Joburg in 2000, then I meet Ronnie Mudimola. Because mm. Joe Parker had all these comedians that he had, your Chris Forrest and Martin yeah, Jonas. Chris Forrest was Borges. legendary, man. Yeah. And uh, Ronnie Mudimola was Shout the black guy, mm. you know, uh, in Joburg that yeah. was doing the stand-up thing. Wow. And then, but, I mean, especially with Kahiso, because if you look at international sketch shows or talk shows, and you look, if you look at the writers, if you pay attention to how many writers... They have, yeah. Involved in just writing a monologue. Yes. Like a Jay Leno or... So then Kex, we got then from Ronnie, um, we got Tepo Mokhali. Loiso. I just oh, met him in Cape Tepo. Town. No, Loiso Spikos, wasn't yeah. even uh, there at the time. Uh, so we ended up with about seven, nine writers. Sheesh. Which meant me and Kahiso made no money from... Yeah, you guys didn't get paid. Monati show because oh, whatever budget that was given to David and Kahiso to do a show... We brought pay. in another eight, seven people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to work on the show. Same with season two. So that's when then Riyad Musa, I was studying with in Cape Town. Then he's doing medicine. Then he has to take a break, do come and take a break. The father is like, finish your medicine. You can do whatever you want. Then he's taking a break from, he used to actually do magic, not even stand up. And then he'll be back again. So then Chris Forrest, I met him when I got to Joburg. Who became our go-to white guy? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Was yeah. Also kids, white guy. yeah, yeah, yeah. Koki Falco mm-hmm. was the other white guy. Another comic we met. Um, I met him at the KKK at the okay. Plain Karu Gangster Fierce. Oh, <laughs> well, no, 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 no. That's what it was called. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's wow. who, uh, somewhere in the Karu where this festival used to happen, and he was part of the cast. And then Joey Rasdin used to work at Old Mutual, and then Alexandra Forbes. And he was trying to sell us medical aid and all that <laughs> shit. That's how, that's how we met Joey. Yeah. He's in the opening sequence of the Fat Joe show, the SABC one, as an extra. Mm. That's where Joey oh. comes from. Then he started trying to sell us. But this is when we are writing the Pure Monati show. Mm. And Joey is coming in. Then David Kubuka is in the mix. This is how all these people Jeez, ended up man. now in this comedy story. and the Pure Bro, can't, can't we get a rerun of... PMS, like, put it on Netflix or something, and or show Saudi, so Remember Saudi sold them to um, multi-choice? Yes. Remember it used to be that channel? Encore. 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 Oh, Encore. 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 It's part of that, Encore. yeah, where yeah. everything was Gemma sold and to, Demma. Yeah, yeah. For not, well, for us, nothing, you know? But, but back then, bro, because, like, I think if Pure Minati was on in this time, It'd be one of the shows that trends every time it's on. Oh, definitely. Bro. How big was how big was that, PMS? Because that was the idea. So for us, the inspiration was in Living Color, maybe a bit of Saturday Night Live, but more in Living Color because it was a black comedy sketch yeah. show with your the Damon Wayans and the Wayans brothers. So then the problems began. We'll do a skit and then some commissioning editor. Mm, I, you can't say that. Mm, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. That's why Pure Minat Show never went beyond two seasons. Oh. So, I mean, we did the Mandela's where we did a reality show. Remember the MTV first reality show ever with the rock, the rock. Uh, uh, rock Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy Osbourne. The Osbournes. The Osbournes. The Osbournes. The Osbournes. The Osbournes yeah. So we did the Mandela's. <laughs> the Mandela's. <laughs> yeah, where well, was Nelson Mandela, Joey, Joey Rastin. Joey Rastin was Grasa Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. You got a car to play Krasa. Hey, you guys. I problem, eh? Right? <laughs> Portuguese. 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 That's all he says. Yes. And then Tata wakes up. Oh, and then I'm making my bed. You know the story Mandela is making his own bed. Yeah, yeah, Wakes yeah, up yeah. at 4 a.m. So I'm there waking up. Me. Portuguese, you don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> 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 This thing kills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some commissioning editor or some guy 
rights to the complaints, whatever. Oh, fuck. So Bloody only yeah. one episode. Uh, in fact, we had a guy who looked like Lennox Lewis who comes to the house in the same episode and he's there trying to spare Bog. with Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> and then SABC, next week you're told, yeah, you guys can't do that anymore. Jeez. Then I meet the family and they're just like, what happened to that skit? Yeah. You know, you, mama, mama, we need time, Zinzi. And everyone in the family, they're just like, and then where's, where's the skit? Yeah. You know? Similar thing to Bobby yeah, and Penny. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exact same thing. So there's always been this thing of people who complain on behalf of other people. But the actual people you're making fun of actually have no problem with this thing. Yes, because they get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but then you can imagine a show. I mean, we did a show where we had an organization called Kausatu. And cows were doing. Ha! Kausatu, yeah. No, no, guys, no, no. You can't, you can't have that, no. Yeah. You can't have that. And remember, we've shot this, we've spent the money already, we're not going to get it back. Jeez. You know, we're already on a low budget, if you think of what we're doing in, like, 2003, 2004. Wasn't that frustrating, dog? It was, always. We've done a skit where Peter Tadi. T music man, he does the standard bank joy of jazz. Yes, yes, yes. He used to manage Mzwaki Mbuli. And there was a time we did a sketch where I was impersonating Mzwaki Mbuli. Yes. Wrote a complaint, formal complaint. Yada, 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 yada. Then we shot another sketch where we had a press conference where we were apologizing. Was that the joy of ass? No, that's just DJ so Joy of Jazz is T uh, Music Man who used to produce uh, it or okay. produces it. Used to I know manage. About the script. Used to the manage. Script, yeah. um, Mzwaki Mbule at the okay, time. Okay, okay. So he writes and complains. So I think the uh, it could be episode one of season two, where it starts with a press conference, and I'm apologizing or we are apologizing for the jokes we've made about people. Mm. And there's a monkey on set. <laughs> <laughs> on the, the press conference. <laughs> and, and so so we apologize. I would like to apologize to Kasa, to these people. I'd like to apologize to Mzwake Mbuli, Mr. Tuzik Man. But we also want to apologize to the chicken about why the chicken crossed the road joke. And then we also want to... Then we started apologizing for bullshit. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like a full-on press conference <laughs> just, that we shot. But you see, because of all that type of stuff, it it was almost impossible for this show to to continue. Yeah. So that was 2003, 2004. Then we pitch again, season three. Yeah. A new commissioning editor comes. So the other ones are like, yeah, pitch, send us this, do this. Someone who literally, I think they got there on a Monday. So wait, tell me something. They don't care about the ratings because I'm sure your ratings were killing. Someone got there on a Monday. And then we're like, yeah, we've been waiting, wondering, oh, yeah, we won't be needing this show anymore. So this was after Romeo left, the, hey, 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 left, hey. the, the people who put uh, Pure Monati show. Mm -hmm. Bloody hell. Because commission editors also have, they are no different from politicians, most of them. Mm -hmm. So they come, they find you've been doing generations for 20 years, whatever. No, they must now come with their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Same bullshit that yeah. politicians yeah. Yeah. do. Yeah. So some of the uh, commission editors... We're doing the same shit, so, you know. So how they do you must think them their authority, authority or rivals? How, how do you think uh, it would have gone if you guys yeah, were, more... if if there was like um, internet back then, like you yeah. had the freedom of the internet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you didn't have to worry about commissioning editors. And look, there'll definitely be more black stand-up comedians, and there'll be more comedians making good money or decent living uh, if that show had continued. So, if you think of the pure, I mean, um, so you think you're funny. Mm. So you think your funny was maybe now 13 years ago or 11, 12, right? Sfiso Nene won season one. Tapelo Tips was in season one. Wow. Tats Gonzo was in season one. Mpo Pops came second in season two. Oh. And Hesh, the white chick who won season two. Celeste came third, I think. Jeez, in man, so if you look names. at our household bro, names, household. 10, 15 top South African comedians, 10 of them at least come from So You Think You're Funny. But we only did two seasons. Oh. Impact. In 2013, 2012, maybe. And it was sponsored by Fanta. So it was an advertiser-funded program. Right? So now you're getting paid at least. No, no, no. My my face was all on like a million Coca-Cola bottles, cans, blah, 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 at the time, you know? So that was that was nice. But also it, we were in control. So we created the show. Uh, Bonke Shipala and a friend of mine came up with it. We worked on the show together. Sells it to Fanta. 
and then you go to SABC, we'll pay you this much to put this show on air, you know? Yeah. So it's, a, it's, it's still a perfect you and Kajiso, ne? It's still you no, 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 Kajiso wasn't involved in So You Think You're Fine. Okay. It's just myself and uh, Bonke Shepalana. Mm, um, mm. Bonke Shepalana runs a company called the Alio Group today. <clears throat> and um, Bonke came up with, Bonke brought the Kardashians to South Africa for brutal fruit, uh, paired them with, what? with Bonang at the time when he was working at SAB. Wow. Damn. He did this campaign called uh, 96. The Kardashians have been here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long time ago. I don't know. Did you know that? Yeah, but Bonang was part of the campaign. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did a campaign at uh, SA Brewery Me, Phil Masinga, Phil, I would MC, Phil would talk about his career for, for SA Brewery as well. He came up with the Zola 7 uh, starter pack wow. at, when he was at Cell C. Gee, shut up, Zola was making hundreds, gents, a month. And <laughs> whenever you think that, yeah, was mm, mm. that SIM card story, Zola, Celsi, and mm. if you recharge or talk on that thing, <laughs> Zola was well between Zola and his management. Yeah, yeah, they were, was, they were charming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was yeah, yeah. money. So brilliant, brilliant guy. Oh so, man, amazing. So, but now my point was, we did two seasons of So You Think You're Funny, and you have the comedians that you guys know, at least ten of them. Yes come from that show. Mm. And that show didn't go beyond season 2014 mm. or beyond mm. season two. And this is the problem with, uh, it, at least with what I was doing. Whatever I stopped doing, then nothing happened beyond. Mm. You know? So you got Black Songly now, 19 years later. Um, and that time there's like 50 idols out there. And, and five of them they were funded are still properly. around. They were well funded. Mm. Mm. Yeah, they were well funded. They were well funded. Mm. Mm. So, and and but the problem now was, I mean, it's my own money that was going into Black Song, or managing or Skumba or Switzerland, uh, tapes, uh, Chris Mapani. As a gun. I mean, there's still a car out there with my name <laughs> in it, and 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 and. But then when I couldn't do that anymore, then the industry just you know. So you know, some guys are funny, but that's it. No one is getting on uh, television or becoming a TV host. So what you're getting... saying is you were spearheading the black movement. I've spent my money. And, and government has never when spent you it, any money. When you stopped, it stopped. Government doesn't spend money in, in comedy, mm. definitely. Mm. You know, soccer, yeah, they do. Maybe sponsoring music festivals and stuff. You know oh, yes. But they don't develop so... shit, you know. <laughs> So, Maybe it's because you make fun of them as well. What you no, it's just comedian? vision. It's just vision. Oh, it's mm. not even that. No, 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 it's vision. It's, so if it's you're, knowing you're in a position where you can change people's lives. Uh, if you're a politician, how would you have done it? How would you have sponsored You need to comedy? find time. So you must, you understand, I would get guys gigs and then they can't get to a gig. Then I bought them cars. Then if you have a gig, you pay for the car. If you don't have a gig, I will pay for the car. But I'm also giving you this gig that's going to pay for the car. But I'm making a simple thing that you find someone a gig, but now they can't get there. If the gig is a small gig or a club gig paying 1000 the friend with the car wants 700 to drive you to the gig. And there's no Uber back there. There's no Uber. There's nothing. You know, you can't take a taxi at that time to him and from a gig. So it's developmental things. It's, yeah. it's infrastructure. You know, that's why everything was where you're staying. Can you get from here to here? And remember, in that time, so from... If you go back to, I mean, Taxi Ride is now maybe 11 years. So let's say 2012, between 2012 and now, and 2018, I had made about 30 something movies from Zanzi Magic. Hey. But when I write a movie, I'll know I'm putting Skumba and ah, Sfiso in yeah, Taxi yes, Ride. Yes, and yes, Celeste or wherever, yeah. 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 If I'm writing uh, Abase Benzi, I'm putting no So you're creating Sorte. employment. So I knew that you find someone from nowhere, they're funny, sharp put them in this thing, they get some popularity, mm. great. Go sell tickets for your one-man show. It's a formula, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. So Skumba was almost perfect from, he was on radio in Tembisa, then I, I, I came in the mix. His you found Skumba? Thing. No, I didn't find Skumba. Yeah. But Skumba, I met Skumba at maybe <clears throat> one of these Comics Choice Awards. Uh, Tsepo Mukhali told me about him, and then I met him at the bar, at uh, Monte Cassino after one of these whatever shows. And then I was like, we'll talk, you know, and the rest is history. So I produced Skumba shows when he was starting. I started the birthday thing he does in Timbisa. Yeah. Uh, but it's like those things, okay, you come from Timbisa, show. Sure. When is your birthday? Uh, August, okay, sharp. 
every August we're going to do a show in Tembisa mm. because the other stuff, it's fine. Mm. You know, Empress Palace is on Monte Cassino mm. or mm. whatever theater. But there's an audience here that can walk. And this is the biggest trick that people don't understand about comedy, right? If you are doing a thousand seater in Tembisa, probably four or five hundred people can walk mm. to the show or they don't need to drive. Mm. So equally, they're also not going to drive to the convention center or and drive to mm. that venue. So there's just a lot of market and, and ticket sales that, that are idling. Tips, way from Harankua, then we started doing shows at uh, Medunsa. At their hall, you know, when is your birthday? Okay, sharp, we're going to do something or try and do something annually. Mm. So, but I was spending my money in all of these things. It means I book the venue, I pay up front. Damn, marketing. how much money And then you we wait and see if this thing is going to sell. But how much money do you have, man? I made good money, but I spend it a lot on, on other people. If it's not on loss. you. No, not, I didn't really spend money on myself. Except the cars that you got. How much do you think you spent on the cars that you bought? I've done a talk before where maybe they were totaling five, five point two million. But Damn. so I used to sit and calculate. I've had, I don't know. So my polo player, the original blue, one point four liter. <laughs> that was my first car in uh, in two thousand. Not these ones that are causing chaos. <laughs> The silver ones that are causing chaos <laughs> on the road. So so this is. Uh, so let's say from 2000, I had a polo player. I had a gold two-liter Highline. Yeah. And then I thought I was addicted to the car. I couldn't let it go. So I bought a, G -sp a, a, a six-speed GTI, the red eye, yeah. when it came out. A black GTI red eye. I still had a, the other Golf 4. So I used to say I have a Golf 8. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think they would get to these numbers. <laughs> <laughs> this is like 2002, yeah, three, you yeah, know? Yeah. And then I was... up. So because I've been driving VWs, yeah. I would ask the guy, yo, are you guys ever going to make a 4x4? And this was before the Touareg came out. Like, mm. I didn't know anything about it. So one Sunday, Mbesuma, if you remember Kaza Chief's uh, player Mbesuma. Yeah, yeah, Collins. Yeah, yeah. Collins, yeah, Collins, Collins Besuma. Besuma. Yeah. Besuma's last game at Chiefs was with Bloemfontein Celtics in Bloemfontein. And we go on a drive. Convoy, big. Unati, Bad Boy T, mm, DJ wow. Monde. Yes, Monde, the late great. Amy Casaletti, and I mean Vivian Casaletti, and then we're still at Chiefs. Six, seven cars or more. We, you know, convoy to Bloom, we watch the game. We come back, and I'm in my golf. Um, and then win back about an hour from, from three hours from Joburg, maybe an hour from home, Kronstadt. My clutch goes in, <laughs> that clutch doesn't come back out. <laughs> I'm in the front. <laughs> In the front of the convoy. In the front of the convoy. <laughs> so I push the I push the gear back <laughs> into neutral, park on the side. Everybody stops. Hey, Ukraine. Hey, yeah, no. Literally pick up pieces of the clash, you know. <laughs> so DJ Mondays like sharp, I'll wait with you. Is everybody goes. This is a Sunday. Yeah. My car gets towed to Lindsay Seca Rosebank. Yes. Yeah. to be the VW dealership. There was all those malls and the, the, there was none of that mm -hmm. zone and, and all that. My car gets towed there. Monday, I go to Land Rover Main Road when it used to be in the Main Road, not mm. Livonia. And I see a discovery through for the first time. I've never seen this thing. Mm. Hey, man. And then, mm. sure, they show me the car. Okay. <laughs> I start feeling in forms. <laughs> <Hey>. Same time. <laughs> hey. Tuesday, they call me, come get the car. Wow. I go, I get my discovery. VW calls, come get your car. I didn't even have someone to come and help me go fetch my, yeah, my yeah. golf. Yeah. So that's my third car. Yeah. My, by then, I don't know if I had sold. I sold the other golf after three months. Mm. So this is number four now, the mm. discovery three. Then I had, then I traded the golf for 330CI BMW. Um... And then a Range Rover Sport after three years of the discovery and then another Range Rover Sport after the other one, three years. And then the one I bought last I had kept until I think I sold it 2018 or 19. But I'd kept it for like seven, eight years. The feeling of having a pair of cars is fantastic. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's amazing, it's amazing. And, uh And then I made my wife pregnant <laughs> and now there's this combi that I drive. There's this... Uh, the quantum that I, <laughs> that I ended up buying <laughs> because now we have three kids, you know. Yeah. So, but what I do, I mean, I've done a few motivational uh, speaking things 
and specifically I talk about money I spend on cars. Mm. If I knew the people that I knew today, whether it's the rich white folks and how they do things or some of the black um, rich guys that I've come to know and how they've spent money. Because I was the first person in everything. Yeah, yeah. So mm. I literally, I couldn't relate. I didn't go to them send what what schools where my classmates and I and their dads could not find. And there's no one you can call you the no, first no, no, black. No, 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 no. I was doing everything on my own. That's why I ended up also finding other comedians or trying to get, I was alone. I was by myself in this thing, you know. And um, it wasn't that much fun, you know, as it is or as it became. So, so then my point is, if you can do that stuff now, while you are single, while you are by yourself, drive the car you want to drive, do what you want, because if you do it later or if you do it too late, then it's not going to make financial sense. Ah, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Makes so I was sense. single. I was spending more time in cars mm, than at than home. I was spending, yeah, yeah mm. in a house or at home. I mean, I was building my house. The developer took forever. Yeah, I mean, it makes I had sense, bro. a crooked bro. story there with the developer. My house took three years, two months to finish. You can't be 40 and still dodgy. being One excited to get a ch ch chasing a GTR. Yeah, oh, yeah. Three. Look, ah, if, if your lifestyle allows you, you know, but that's why then equally... What I, money I was spending on other comedians or developing other talent. It was different when I was single, by myself, one kid, okay, two kids, and now I've got three kids, you know, I've got a wife, and you still have your family, your, your people that hey, you man, take care of. I heard a crazy, crazy story. How was your last born uh, conceived? Jesus, bro. That's a crazy, crazy story. <laughs> I don't know where you had the story. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering, man. Hey, how do you know how how he conceived? <laughs> or where he conceived? <laughs> it's a bit of a mind fuck. Yeah. So is the seed going down, gents? No, is it fine? Is it? I think it's going oh, down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, 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 there we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gently. <laughs> yeah. Like there's a lubricant there that's <laughs> massaging you there. <laughs> so so my son was born 2018, March, right? So 2017, our Kamsela is the other name I forgot at the SABC. The people oh, yeah, who found, the, 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 the who three found names, yeah. the Pure Manati show. Mm. So I did a show with Natasha Tahani and Mark Banks. Um, I'll try and remember. It was almost like the Kumas. So it was, it was on YouTube, family. Man. They put it on YouTube. It was on SABC3. And yes. then I think they would put it on YouTube. Mm. Natasha Tan was my sister and um, um, Mark Banks was my father or our father. Uh, the Jewish father. Legendary stand-up comedian. Mark. Well, second ever stand-up comedian I met in my life was Mark Banks. So on the last day, I was rushed to hospital, right? On the last day of shoot, uh, I, th I thought I was having a heart attack. But this would have been my fourth time where I think... I'm having a heart attack. I've been to Waterfall Hospital three times since it opened. Jeez. But that's me thinking, hey, <laughs> I'm dying. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was, it was anxiety. And, you know, you spend seven, eight grand and then they're like, there's nothing here. Blood tests, <laughs> x-rays, the usual shit. It's like a drill, you know. Because save us some money. How, how was the feeling? What were you feeling? Like, why so for, me, for me, so for me, it's uh, in Sesotho, it's called Let's Asia, me. I don't know how to translate it. Maybe mm. it's anxiety, but it feels like someone is pulling your heart. Sure. Like okay, this. okay. That's scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So twice from my house, my wife drove me. Once I off-ramped uh, from Allendale, I drove myself straight to uh, to Waterfall. So there's over a couple of years. But it's also a lot to do with what I was doing. Yeah. Trying to sell tickets. Yes, mm. yes. Black song is like three, 4,000 tickets to sell. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot, you know, bro. It's I mean, a lot. October... We've got Black Song the 7th October. I've got four one-man shows at the Lyric. I've got two shows in PE. So I have to sell about 8,000 tickets in October. That's stressful. So, But for me, it was the, the anxiety is actually the business model. So a lot of black people will tell you they are coming to the show. I will go back to how my son was, sure, was sure, sure. conceived. We come into the show, we come into the show, we come into the show. They know they are coming to the show, okay? They don't buy tickets. Yeah. Um. They see you two, three times before the date. Oh, yeah, Dave, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming. 
So we'd advertise a black song only for like two, three months. And then two weeks, no, three weeks before the show, there's maybe 300 tickets yeah. sold. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? It's yeah. 3,000 something seats. Yeah. Mm. Two weeks before the show, maybe you're sitting on maybe 800. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you still have a, then you start selling a couple hundred a day closer to the date. Okay. And then you walk in the room and it makes no sense. It's, it's packed. Packed, packed, packed. Yeah. You're turning away like another two, three hundred people at the door. The difference is, if you watch Trevor's shows, for instance, because Trevor has a lot more Indian colored white people yes. buy his tickets. Yeah, yes. The tickets will sell out quicker. Yeah. So you can always add another show. Mm. So easily, if at a certain time before the date, certain amount of tickets are sold, you just add another show. You're already paying the venue all that night. Exactly. Or, yes, PM yes. or blah, 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 blah. Mm. So for us, it will be the last minute. Like, you know this thing is going to sell out, but but the anxiety between the month, two months, and three weeks before the show where you're like, this makes no sense. I mean, this show sells out every single time. Bro, we went through the and same like thing with, uh, with your show. Yeah, Sunbed, Sunbed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We had to call Pops. It's like, relax. Yeah, we had to yeah, relax. Yeah, literally, Pops was the one who so said, we see it every yeah, month. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were trying to fill up 8,000, 10,000. Yeah, we only had sold 500. That, that yeah, yeah, yeah. So. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's crazy. It makes no sense. It just, for us, it's a disadvantage. Mm. Um, just from us as comedians, but if, black comedians, or selling to black It's consumers. not even comedians, bro. Or, I think of black consumers, anything black's got black events related. Yeah. But festivals are seeing flames, bro. No, no, no. Now it's even worse. It's worse now. After COVID, no, after like, nobody's selling the same. After COVID, it's worse. I mean, the baby was meant to do F&B Stadium. They now postponed it to next month. Is that, what's his name? Uh, Benner Boy. No, no, not Benner Boy. Yeah. Ah, Benner Boy is sold out, man. That's For F&B. One, the baby. The no baby. The baby is the rapper name. Oh, my son, my 14-year-old is always telling me about the babe. Yes. Yeah, 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 that's the guy. So he was meant to do end of this month, FNB Stadium. I've never even heard of the baby until a few months ago. He's doing FNB. Yeah. So now they had to postpone. I'm surprised, man. They had to postpone. Now they're taking it to Memphis, General Square. Damn, from FNB. That's a big, that's a big jump. <laughs> They're taking it back to the CT. They're taking it back to the CT. That's a big jump. Yeah. That's a huge jump. Yeah, bro. People, people are sick flames, bro. Okay, the full of cars now, but that's a huge <laughs> jump, man. Eh? Yo, that's a big jump. Yeah. Me to the square in Newtown. It's not, it's, it's not so easy. So for me, like, I was thinking, I mean, Benna Boy is the same weekend as Delicious. Yes. And it's like a nine... FNB Dude, is he sold out, Benna Boy? There's no it's way. Not. There's no way. No way. It's not Burner Burner Boy, is not. guys. No, guy. It's There's nothing wrong. It's, it's but it was fantastic. It was selling out stadiums on, so. in the US. But it's delicious. It's a September long weekend. Mm. It, it's F&B Stadium. Hectic. That's there's a lot of tickets to sell. Yeah. In, to the same similar more or less people. I mean, I don't know who his crowd in South Africa would be. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so, yeah, continue as you were. But, yes. And I'll go back to why. Yes. Uh, so, so then part of the anxiety and the selling tickets and, and so, so that June 2017, I had a black song, I think 3rd June, Empress Palace, fine, it's okay. 30th June, we would have had Cape Town. And then my manager and partner was doing um, Johnny Clegg, the Apollo in London, so mm. 3,600-seater. Mm. So I was going to take one night and Rob Hesov had agreed to to bankroll the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the show, yeah, yeah. right? That now means before they've got lights, they don't have sound, they have sound, they don't have lights. Before all that, before flying in comedians, marketing, the rental was about 830,000 rand. Sheesh. Which is obviously money I have to carry or mm. whatever shit I have to carry. Mm. Or now I've got like so many, the Grand West, 30th June, Joburg, 3rd June, mm. then August. Mm. Uh, I haven't had artwork done for mm. the show. August, I must do the Apollo in London. Mm. So then I end up in hospital, right, mm. um, on this day. Um, this is uh, shooting this TV show. And the doctor is pretty much like, if you don't stop thinking you can control the world or you're, you're going to do all these things, you're going to die in three months. You're going to have a heart attack. Whoa. So I cancelled... Everything. So I did the Black Song on the 3rd June. We cancelled Cape Town 30th June. And I took about three months off. So June, July, August, I had zero gigs in South Africa. 
Then I went to US. I went to Russell Peters. I chilled with Russell in LA. Kakiso mm. and Pearl had catching feelings yes. in LA. Yes, the movie, right? yeah. Uh, movie premiere in LA. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna come for the premiere. You know, I'll stay at Russell's or whatever. Uh, so three months, I'm out of the country, right? That's the plan, zero gigs here. And I'll tell you the dumbest thing about the premiere. So Russell was moving house from Malibu to Calabas. Yeah. And, you know, moving his stuff, then moving cars. And they're like, can you drive this car? Can you drive that car? <laughs> so, so we drive. I haven't driven. I don't know if I'd driven in the States before. Yeah. But we drive the cars from Malibu to, to Calabas. But, you know, I've been there for a couple of days, Ubering, like $100 to Uber yeah. from Malibu to go hang out with Kahiso and them uh, at, in Venice or whatever. And then they search this thing, it's like $120 at 2 a.m. when I must go back to Malibu, sleep on the couch, try again 4 a.m. Yeah. On the day of the premiere, I decide I'm going to take one of Russell Peters' cars <laughs> and I'm going to drive in that L.A. truck. <laughs> mm. I get to the premiere, which I'm in LA for. <laughs> no, sir, you can't come in, sir. The, the movie has already started. Yeah. Uh, the only way you can come in is if someone comes out. And the difference was, after my experience, right, the old me would have been like, do you fucking no, know who, who I, I am? am. Mm -hmm. I fucking flew from South Africa, Africa for this. Yada, 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 call. I was like, Thank you, ma'am. No problem. I sat on one of those tables where they put popcorn, salt, and then yes, yes. Mm -mm. I chilled. I waited for the movie to finish. Hung up. So there's a big difference between me now and ah, back in the days when I was you. trying to do like a million things. Mm. So now I'm in LA at Russell's house, right? Russell is studying a tour and I'm going to go on tour with him. Mm. Book tickets. He's studying in Washington, D.C., from there, I'm going to hang out with uh, Brian Olson used to sponsor me with Chevrolet, with General Motors mm, mm. when he was in South Africa. Then we're going to go to the Essence Festival. Yeah, that, this is our plan. Right? Mm, mm, mm. Tickets booked, accommodation, I'm flying to, Russell is already gone. And then I wake up, uh, Ego, a friend of mine was shot. The guy was shot in the Bentley. Jeez, was shot. The guy was shot in the Bentley, man. This is Bristol's story from the Free State. For real. Yeah. So now... My wife is like, yo, have you seen this? And I look at the newspaper thing and, you know, you can see your friend's feet, you know, some of the shoes and covered in foil. And I fucking lose it, you know. My wife was also good friends with the wife. And now my wife, keep on up at CD Sack. So my wife is at his house almost every day cooking and, you know, people are coming for my CD. So. Then I'm like, I don't know what the hell happened here. What if these people are coming back? or they're going to come back to the house, you know. Mm. So I cancel everything. Mm. I pull out of the tour um, with Russell. Oh, because he's your partner. No, look, so we used to do all those Christmas parties. I used to do my Christmas party in Kronstadt. They used to beach on the track. Okay. Yeah, for years, for mm. like more than 10 years. Mm. And then I would do the comedy uh, at the New Year's or 30th December. So we were friends. We knew each other. Well, and you, you guys didn't have any kids. business interests? Besides the events, yeah. no. Okay. We didn't have any other mm. any other business. Mm. Um, but, you know, for me, if you're doing a three-day festival and you want comedy, then you call me. I of take course. care of the comedy. I'm not really involved in the... Sure. Uh, Sugar Smacks used to book their artists. Yeah, and Blah, yes. blah, blah. Yeah. Mm. But anyway, so Ego gets shot, right? And this is where this crazy shit comes with uh, my son, my mm. last born. So I cancel everything and I come back home. And we attend the memorial, uh, one in Joburg, one in Velkom, and the family decides they're going to have a private funeral in Stacksbrake. So we can't go to the funeral. But the funeral weekend is the same as the Devon July weekend. Mm, right? Okay. Now, I have a gig in Kwa Kwa called Diponso. Diponso is like Makufe. Mm -hmm. Or used to be Makufe in Kwakwa, basically in Putadicha. So I'm doing the gig there, the comedy night, blah, blah, blah. And the guy who's getting the gig wants to meet. So now I'm in the country. Remember, two, three months now, I don't have any gigs or commitments. And the guy wants to meet in Bethlehem. 
So I drive from Joburg to Bethlehem on a Thursday. 8 a.m. meeting, mug and bean somewhere. Um, my wife has a gig at the Devon July with her friend. Mm. Um, they actually um, used to sell tickets for for Julius is my key. Yes. So they have their own plans. They're going to Devon. They've got their own accommodation. These plans have nothing to do with me. I'm not supposed to be in the country. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I do my meeting. I'm in Bethlehem. I'm now halfway to Jovek, halfway to Devon. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Devon July, mama. <laughs> <laughs> I get back to the entry. I look left. I look right. I I go to Devon, right? It's Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> my wife's got a room with her friend. They're running around for the event. Mm. I book my own room. Yes. At the at City Lodge there by Gateway. Um. So this is Thursday. Friday, I drive to Empangen. It's Fiso. Nen has got a gig. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's almost two hours from Devon. One and a half hours, whatever. Do Sviso's gig, there's accommodation. Then I'm looking at the time after the gig. Then there's a couple that buys tickets for my wife's maquis, mm. where she's selling tickets. And they say to me, oh yeah, we've rented a house in Zimbali. Yes, yes. We've got a room if you want. Yeah. So I leave Mpangeni after my gig, and I decide I'm not going back to Devon because you know, Zimbali is just, just, right just here. here. So I sleep there at that house. This is Friday night. Saturday is the 7th July, whatever, you know, it's, the thing happens. After that, I'm like, hey, my wife, are you coming with me? She's like, hey, Baba, DJ Choice is playing, this guy, <laughs> after party. I'm like, let's go. Okay, whatever. Then I'm like, I'm hungry, you know. The only thing that opens, I don't know now, after Devon July in Devon, is the KFC at Gateway. Mm, it's the mm. only thing that's open. Mm. 40 minutes waiting to queue, mm. and then another maybe 40 minutes to get the food. Mm. This is like 1, 2 a.m. Mm. So for the story to make sense, um, my wife used to have, what are those things women put for five years to prevent? Uh, uh, do you do? Uh, loop. The loop. Loop. The loop. <laughs> <laughs> you want to fix the light? Yeah, fix the light. It's fine. Continue. Um, or did it just go off? Yeah. yeah. No, continue. It's fine. Yeah. Um, so the loop. <laughs> How is your, you guys have different grades for load shedding. <laughs> <laughs> one light. One light Never just one. went out. <laughs> it's coming back 20 to 1. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming back 20 to 1. Don't know. So she's got so, some things. Yeah. No, no, no. So my wife used to have that. Yeah. But it's actually very unhealthy. Mm. Yeah, rusa, wow. literally, it can... Rusa can in English. It can get rusty, and there's Damn. a lot of disadvantage hey, with that shit. You can you imagine this shit in a woman's body for a like human. five years, some are ten years? Ah. To prevent, ne? Yeah. Mm. 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 Yeah, to prevent. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, at some point we said, Awa. We can't, you can't have this anymore. Mm. So she had these two apps, right? Which can tell you based on your cycle or ovulation or whatever. Or oh, when is. Yes. Yeah. Today, good to go. You, yeah. you, don't, oh, yes. you don't need to protect yes, you or protection, yes, yes. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> These days, oh, why you can't, you can't. <laughs> so that's literally almost every single time. For years. Yeah. You, know, you check. You yeah. know, my wife even had two apps. And, <laughs> and literally... My last born, I mean, my last, my second born is now 11. So for six years, five, six years, this thing worked mm. for a good couple of years. Hi, mm. Yanung, the night of the 10th of July, nah, yeah, she's had her champagne, Yana. Yeah. So I get KFC and I ask, can I at least come to your room, guys, in uh, City Lodge so I don't have to eat driving <laughs> to Zimbali or, you know? Mm. And can I just eat? Can I just sit in your room and eat, eat, the, my, the eat my pineapple bag? Oh the thighs, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they're like, sharp. while I'm eating, her friend gets a booty call. Hey. Hey. And she's on the phone. Hey. You know? yeah. I was like, okay. Sure, know. Julius. And my wife mm. here is like, Okay, okay, bye bye. <laughs> you're, you're stupid. Neither is the but the monkey's dad now. Yeah. <laughs> Julius was with his wife, I think. I think. He was already married. Yeah. 
So now my wife is obviously on some, okay, dude, eat your bag up, Baba. And the friend is like, you must go with me. <laughs> <laughs> so now my wife is no longer going to stay here. Yeah, she's coming she's with you. She's now coming back with me to Zimbabwe. To Zimbabwe. Hey, then there's is Yaki for Zimbabwe. Hey, how you know? It's Hop movies. of you yeah. no one is looking at an app. Yeah, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Hi, okay. Afterwards, without even having to cheese like, ah, chief, I'm telling you, here, it's good on you. I, sure, I go back to the state, right, after this, right? I was just for Labs Comedy Festival. Um, you know, I think I did a show at Caroline's in New York. And then my kids and wife come August, that little gap. Yeah. Um, holiday and then and I, I do a joke about this thing you know where um, you get a depending on your settings on your phone it's either a message comes in and you know who it is or you see the message or you see the message you don't know where it's coming from so depending on your settings yeah, uh, yeah, on WhatsApp or SMS sometimes you see, the, sometimes you see the, name. the name yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And I do a joke, like a message comes in on the fruit phone. It's like, I think I'm pregnant. And I'm like, yay. And I open the message. Yo, oh, at least it's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so now I'm back in the States and this person is like, ah, chief. I think I'm pregnant. It's late. So, but what freaks me out was, I wasn't supposed to be in the country. One. Remember, oh, I only came yeah. back yeah. because my friend oh, got shot. Yeah. Yeah. But I wasn't yes. supposed to be in South Africa between June Three until months. September. That's yeah. why. Yeah. Zero gigs. And the reason I end up going to Devon July is because now I've got no gigs. I've got nothing to do in Joburg. Yeah. And then I decided. You gotta thank the call. And then I had a meeting in uh, Bethlehem for a show in September. Mm. But now I'm like, I'm, I'm halfway to Devon. Mm. Then I end up. It's so depending on what you believe spiritually and, yeah. and yeah, you know, yeah, where yeah, you yeah. are with whatever it is that you believe in in your life. Like the dude was gonna come whether we want it, <laughs> whether we want it or not. Yes. Yeah. My last born was, was no, he was coming. What did you call him? What's his name? Uh, Omari. Omari. It means highest in God in Swahili. Oh, wow. beautiful. Um, beautiful. So. I mean, it's it's a crazy story. I don't know where you heard the story. But... I don't know what I mean. Uh, what, what does Jum Jum call his people from uh, Jolo 99? I'm a one. I'm a rot. What do you call them? In I'm a rot, yeah. I'm a rot, eh? Yeah. Hey, I've got rot. No, no, no. It's a, to, when you think about it, it's like, <laughs> wow, man. That is that is just... Please tell know? him Please tell him the story about um, your dad, how he used to drive every day past you, but you only spoke to him when you were 18. Where do you get this thing? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> The story is my niece. Come on. Okay, so I grew up in Kronstadt, you know. I come from Kronstadt in the Free State. And so where we live, there's a first street, Lemelaho. First street. Second Street. Oh, yeah, the, the loop is working my again. Yeah. Um, my <laughs> grandmother's <laughs> house is number one, two, three from the corner, mm. right? So typically every car that's coming in that street, if it's in the stoop or whatever, the cars, cars are going to pass. I mean, the house is the third one, whether you're going to the last house in the street mm -hmm. or... So you know the neighbors, you know that the mama we have on, it's number two, that side. So one day, I guess then, I was maybe 18, I was first day at UCT. Typical township, I'm standing with a girl in the street. And my grandmother is like, hey, when I was one, I'm like, ah, which I get the Hasisho. Hasisho is my dad's surname, family surname. And the girl was visiting at the Sisloho family. Mm. So I'm telling my grandmother, no, 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 give my mom, which I get the Hasisho, you know, give you holiday, school holiday. Yeah. Yeah. And my grandmother is like, hey, Boswandi, you must be careful. It might be your relative. Hey. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's like, you know, Ntato, how get there? And I'm like, no. But, now, <laughs> but then is the guy who's always driving <laughs> to go <laughs> see his mom. <laughs> no, that's literally, that was my conversation with my grandmother. <laughs> no, no, that was our conversation with my grandmother. 
I was standing with a girl in the street. <laughs> And she's like, who's that? I'm like, she's visiting that time. And she's like, oh, no, you must be careful. She could be your relative. Did you know your dad? Your dad is your dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've never bothered. I've never asked yeah. my mom. Ever. You, you know, never asked my mom? Who's no, my dad? No, I wasn't really lacking. You know, I got five uncles. Yeah. Ah. Took, brought me up or took care of me. Uh, family has always been. Sure. So I've never really been, who's my dad? Or oh, because, you know, my mom has always taken care of us. My uncles were there. So... It's, it's almost like I didn't notice, you know. So now I ask my mom, "Hey, mama, uh, my dad get in," and my mom laughs. Ah, ka, 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 who told you? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to meet him? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to meet him? <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. Oh. yeah. So my grandfather, my mom's dad didn't like my father's dad. Mm. Because mm. my father's dad used to be one of those apartheid police. Mm. Uh, I, th- I don't know if they were called my green beans here or, or anywhere else, or Mampara. Mm. But they used to be quite hectic, you know. They had that authority that they are the police. Mm. So my mom's dad didn't like my dad's dad. Mm. And based on that, my mom's dad was pretty much like, hey, we want nothing to do with you. Don't mm. worry about this child. We'll bring him up. Sure. And that's literally what happened to my mom and dad. Then mm. my mom had to say to him, hey, dude, you're going to have to yeah. find yourself mm. someone else. Mm. Mm. And literally, that's what happened. So mm. so then now my mom is like, do you want to meet him? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. So I come from UCT, December holidays, my first year. I'm 18. My dad is going to show I remember those uh, counters with the Cadbury's and the sweets. <laughs> and there's a pool table and he's sitting there. It's like, hello, son. I'm like, hello. <laughs> Do you want shoes? That's the first thing. <laughs> That's the first thing. My dad. Asked. Do you want shoes? Do you want shoes? <laughs> hello, hello. Do you want shoes? <laughs> it's not like I wasn't wearing shoes. I wasn't wearing nice shoes. But that's that, that was he's me bonding. and my dad. He's bonding. He's done. That was me and my dad. <laughs> so I was 18, you know, and then I think I was... So my dad must have died maybe five years after that. But so now I knew him, you know, he had his own father. But also one of his daughters or one of my sisters mm-hmm. that I didn't know, Martin. Martin used to dribble us when we were growing up playing soccer. Like she's a girl. Mm. She used to dribble the whole team mm. growing up playing. So she was, if she had the ball, really Majita, she was the only girl. Mm. If there were two squads playing and Martin has the ball, no one was coming close to Martin. Wow. Mm. But we've been playing growing up, mm. you know, a bit younger than me, but that turned out to be one of my sisters. Mm. Or was from there my, ever from a bond or a liking to her? No, yeah, we, we were cool, you know, but there wasn't like a feeling of... Yeah, that's what I mean. No, not really. So when my dad passed away, I was... So before comedy, before Black Song, I did a show called Comedy Blackout. Oh, yes, Because I've yes. always been trying to do this blacks come to comedy. Yes, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> so I did a show called Comedy Blackout, right? And uh, which was another maybe three, four years. Mm. Um, you know, I brought your Pierre Edwards, uh, Willie and Woody, the guy with a wooden puppet, um, a whole bunch of comedians, Matt Greer Barnes, Dwayne Perkins, you know, all these American comedians I used to bring between, let's say, 2000 and 2003. So on the day of my dad's funeral, I had two shows. I had a 6 p.m. show and a 9 p.m. show at the Market Theatre. Wake up maybe for, must have been... Yeah, about my 2000, because I still had a polo player. That's how I remember. Yes. Right? Yeah. I still had my first car. So wake up, whatever, 4, 4.30 a.m., drive home to Kronstadt, funeral is quarter past seven. By 11 a.m., I found out I have an older sister who's been to jail, who had a child born in jail, and my mom was a prison warder. <laughs> and I used to think I was the oldest. <laughs> Movies, bro. <laughs> Movies. I used to think I was the oldest, but I think I'm I'm the only boy. Mm. So, I, but this is between me leaving Joburg 4 a.m. Funeral starts at quarter past. 
by 11 a.m. <laughs> I yes. found out, okay, I have an older sister. sister. And she's got a child, you know, who was born in jail. And then I had another sister, same age as me, who also has a child. So I'm finding out I'm an uncle. I'm 20 years old. Of, of two, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm finding out now I'm actually an uncle. And my mom is talking or standing next to the one of the women who's the mother mm. to one of the, the sisters. My sisters. Mm. That's, that's my age. You know, and then there's the other, I think, two with uh, my the woman mm. my dad married. And then I drive back, show at 6 p.m., show at 9 p.m. That's crazy, man. Yo, your sister was in jail for what? I think fraud. I'd, I'll have to oh, check. I think, yeah. I think. Yeah. But you know, fraud back then, you probably stole the pieces in the checkup. <laughs> so, so, oh, oh, so. You probably st stole snuff or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only this and... Nothing too serious. No, yeah. no, 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 no. But no, bro, no, nothing hectic. So you're traveling all over the world, so you think you're funny. PMS, you've done all these shows, you've worked with Fat Joe, you've bought all these cars. Bro. Why does the bank want your house then? So how do we get there? So my, my philosophy in life... I've always believed if I woke up with nothing, as long as I can put people in a room and I can still talk, I'll make money. Mm. So I've always operated on if I lose everything, I need a venue to a point where even if there's no mic, then I'll have to stand there and project, project or whatever. Yeah. Right? So I've never, I've never been afraid of not having money. Mm, mm, right mm. but COVID was the first time ever I was not in control so I could not mm. put people get into a room in a room mm. it was illegal I would have been arrested yeah, right, right. Mm. so that was the first time ever where if I didn't have money last month if in I'm... a month or two I'll have money mm. you know previously mm. Mm. So that's why I've always helped people give my money away, invest in this. I used to own a modeling agency with Pearl and Zynga. Jeez. Wow. Um, I've, I've done a lot with my money. What are the but company also, did you invest in? You were telling me some company you invested in. Oh, Herotel. Herotel was a fiber, um, what do you call it? It's a fiber and internet ISP provider, basically. But aren't you investing for dry days, COVID days? Is that not no, why no, no, COVID, nobody knows. No, I'm saying, you know, normally when you invest, you're investing for like, what do they no, call it? No, so when, I invest. A rainy day. A rainy day, yes. Mm. Sorry, so sorry. there's two ways to invest. You can invest in shit you don't know. Yeah. Mm. So for me, first of all, even getting involved in Herotel, um, we were talking about YouTube earlier. Yeah. I've, I've got this many followers, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. And then my my... YouTube subscribers were about 10,000 up until COVID. Now yep. it's maybe almost 20,000. Sure. So, but I also know a lot of black people couldn't afford data, mostly still can't today. Yeah, yeah right? true. So the connection between my views, or at least the target market or people that would watch my stuff, I knew they can't afford uh, data. I see where you're going. Got which you. is then my interest in investing in Herotel, in a Herotel mm. or a data internet mm. related business. Mm. Equally, I'm a shareholder. There's a station in the Free State that beat FM, which was supposed to have started like nine, ten years ago, where I'm a shareholder. Going back again, media, media control, trying mm. to sell tickets, being mm. in entertainment. Mm. 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 Blah, Radio blah, 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 blah. is a huge yeah. factor. Mm. But the biggest investment, like I said, whether I was putting money in producing other comedians' shows or my own shows, because also there's no point sitting with money, honestly. Yeah. Um, you, unless you want to live the typical life, you have your six-month salary story that you save before you resign. Mm. You're going to do this. You're going to rent. You're going to get married. You're going to buy a car. You're going to pay your bond. Twenty. I've never had a normal life. Sure. I mean, mm -hmm. since I started doing stand-up, you know, for almost 25 years now. So I, where my other money went, I've recorded almost every single stand-up comedy show I've done in my life. Mm. So... About 25 years. So I've got tapes from the small, wow. small cam, cam recorders. Mm, mm, wow. mm. So from the first comedy blackout shows. Jeez. Me, Riyadh, mm, uh, mm. Ronnie Mutimola, <clears throat> Sapo Mukhali, Kahiso. 
three, four years, I've got that footage. Wow. Black only from the first one mm. to sometimes six cameras, full HD, sometimes mm. one camera, sometimes two cameras. Behind the scenes, Makufe, 10 years, 5,000 people on a Wednesday night in Bloom. I've recorded all this show. Wow. So, which I was paying production, mm. but the, there was no budget for production. Mm. So it wasn't like we were filming it to release it or filming it to put it on yeah. ABC or on Mnet or whatever. So the money is technically, if, if I think it's rock bottom, mm. you can come to me and say, okay, Dave, we'll give you 100,000 for everything, fuck off. Or we'll give you equally 100 million or 10 million. Yes, because that's content. Let's go away. Mm. Yeah. So... I've got that, right? Wow. Obviously, the other thing, to some extent, I guess a library, I've got other comedians' footage or performances. I've got Trevor's first ever Black Song Whoa. performance. Jeez, well, that's what the yes, that's, that's, what, Eugene, that's a lot. So Can I have that one? You don't need that one. Uh, <laughs> So obviously the comedians have the right to their material. Okay. But it's a simple... Ah, I'm Trevor editing. doesn't care, man. No, 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 no. But, but I'm do saying... they have the right if they didn't produce it? No, no, no. I own the actual material and the tape yeah. this thing is on. Yeah. But I can't sell your material. Like monetize it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like... I yeah. wouldn't anyway. Even if there was a legal loophole. Sure, 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 yeah, sure. I, I wouldn't. Yeah. Right. yeah. So I'll come to you and say, okay, I'm cutting... 10 episodes of this from this footage, yes or no? Woo. It pays this much. That's really all it is. Wow. You say no, sharp, it's okay also. I don't have to do whatever shit, right? But equally, if you wanted to now start thing, you're doing a documentary or you're telling whoever story, you're probably going to have to come to me. Mm. So, and that's like 19 years of Black Song Lee. All my one. I've recorded two, three one man shows that I've never released because I just didn't think they're better than so you think. So then why not do that when the bank's coming for for for, for your house? Why not sell one of those? Because specials? it's not a situation that requires the bank and the house thing is banks being banks. Okay. It's banks thinking, hey, that one looks like they are teka teki. Let's mm. go. You know? There's no really a because banks are so let me tell you what banks do. If I have an overdraft for 100,000 or 200,000 mm. and you turn over whatever money every month, if you start turning over less, mm. bank calls and says, according to the system, you are no longer turning over this much, you are turning over this much. Therefore, we have to take your overdraft from this to this. Yes, yes, yes. So equally, if you call them and say, no, but extend my bond or open it, or I can pay this. You are talking to the human being. They tell you, I can't do anything because the system, system. says mm. yeah. we must yeah, only give you. Mm. Mm. What, so then equally, that's what banks do. You miss three payments. Mm. I do all this shit in my stand-up, in my latest show, mm. right? You haven't paid this for so long. We're going to come and fetch it. You haven't paid your... So you, you have missed or, payments? <clears throat> no. Mm. I don't talk about it. I, I, I've never talked about it. I didn't miss payments. Mm. So I can show proof. I won't of do course. it now or delve yeah, into yes, it. Yes, but yes. if we had to be in court, I can show you that I've never missed a payment on my bond. Mm. And then I can also show you how the bank says, you owe us this much, and then there's a letter of demand. And and, and, and you're black. It doesn't help to yeah. lose your black. It, yeah. it, it will get legal very quickly. Mm. And it, it, if, if I bother myself with... Yeah. All that shit. So where are we also, now? Do we still have the house? I've been in my house for more than 16 years, man. Oh. Say my, so my house was, take it. No, my house was the fourth house in that estate. Hey. In phase, hey. in phase two. Oh. No, 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 no. Look, it's... And, and this is a lesson maybe yeah. for, for people. Because one, again, based on you qualify... Let me tell you how bad this thing is. When I had a goal for two-liter Highline, the banks gave me, allowed me to buy another call for without deposit mm, mm. while I was still paying for the other call. For. Yes, yes. Yeah. This is when I was still building my house. So my house wasn't ready. So your bond starts small and then the more they building, the, the higher your... Yeah, when they see you have money, they want you to spend more money. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. No, yeah. that's their job. The, mm. the bank's job is honestly to keep you in debt. Yes, yes. literally. You know, um, also the more money you have, 
the more money they want to borrow you. The more money. Yes. Yeah. yes. It's, a, it's a system, yes. essentially. Mm. So it's not even about, you. like I said to you, I had oh. shares here. I had boom, boom, three boom. cars paid off. Uh, I have camera equipment with it. Where's the bar? Yeah, yeah. I've got Can we use some of that equipment? Bro? We need some equipment, yeah. Uh, we've got, me and Kakisa have two um, red cameras. I don't know from Whoa. what, yeah. And then we had three Panasonic something somethings. And then we had the first thing in the country. What do you call that thing where you can edit while you're shooting? Yeah. The, the A-Track. The boys said they're going to Yeah, we need that. I, I need to remember what that thing was called. Yeah, man. I need to remember what that thing was called. But like we are the second the people in the country to have that thing. Mm. That's what shot 10 seasons of Loiso Kaola's show. Mm. That's how I shot wow. mm. almost 30 movies I made. Emmy nominated shows, that is. Yeah, you can say David Kao's cameras were here. <laughs> 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 you can you can thank everyone and also David Kao's cameras. <laughs> so, so, for the so I want to understand, man, with what you just so, said, what does rock bottom to David Kao look like? And what would be rock bottom? So for me, it's everyone else around me. And this has been something I have to deal with mentally. It's I've always looked after people, whether my wife, my kids my family or extended family, relatives, mom, sister, blah, 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 blah. So the minute I can't do what I used to do for those people, that that's uncomfortable for me, right? right? But it also where I realized my money was actually going everywhere else. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not like I was buying myself. I hadn't bought a car in like seven, eight years. Did you go through depression during uh, the COVID days? No. So... Okay. Um, I don't know where you guys sit spiritually. Sure. Okay. So if you go to a medium or a sangoma, yes. a traditional yes. healer, yara, 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 yeah. and they tell you your problems because they can tell you your problems. Yeah. Um, I was told I must stay home. Oh. Right? And going back maybe 2016, 17. Is but this a, a medium or a sangoma? Uh, so... I know at least four or five people that have twasa or become sangomas sure, sure, around sure. me. Okay, got you. Uh, friends, mm. uh, colleagues. Mm. Uh, I mean, when I was growing up, obviously, you know, you know we used to be taken uh, to a sangoma for mm. a checkup. It's a, I yeah. call it a floor x-ray on my face. <laughs> <laughs> it's a floor x-ray. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So... But obviously that comes with the belief in ancestors and, yeah. and, and following whatever cultural beliefs come with your upbringing. So, and I want to go back to uh, your question was, what was what is rock bottom? Mm, and then mm, 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 mm. also, but my point was, before you can go into depression, right? Depending on where you are spiritually, because depression is almost, it's either you're not accepting the situation you're in or you're not seeking help for a certain situation that you're in. At least that's what I think, that's what leads into depression. So, but yeah, I stay home, stay home. This is when now my house is almost paid off. Corporate gigs are not really there. I'm losing money. You must remember me, bro. I've been going to the DRCs and I've done other shit. That's a totally another life that mm. I don't talk about or mm. tweet. So some of the business stuff or ideas that I've okay. tried or had. Yeah. So also you're spending money in foreign currency or dollars, mm. but you're not making money. So yeah. a gig comes in, pays you, then Boom. I'm in another country and trying this, that. Uh, that's got nothing to do with entertainment. Got you. Right. And that's me going back to, you can have money. What you do with it, it's a totally different story. Mm. So stay home, stay home, which obviously I'm like, yeah, but there's a gig there that's paying this much, mm. you know. And all it meant for me was COVID with all that it took or it looked like it was taking, no gigs, no money. Gotcha. It actually meant I'm home every day mm. or now I'm... I'm not leaving the house. Mm. So mentally, the silence that came with COVID, yes. the, that for me, that was life-changing. But obviously, you first go through the, what is happening, then stay home for two weeks. The politicians are like, no, 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 two weeks, you know, two weeks. So let me tell you how crazy this, this is. 2019, Kweku Mandela gets me a gig, uh, Charlize Theron's uh, charity dinner thing in New York, right? Mm. 
meet Aquafina there. Jay Roach is in the audience, like you're fucking funny. The guy who made Bombshell and a whole lot of other things. Mm. You know, Drew Barrymore's and them. Oh. Me, I destroy, can put me anywhere. Sharp. Get a manager, agent in New York. This is 2019, November. Whoa, bro. Then I've got a black song in April 2020. Yeah. So I'm gonna come home, I'm gonna do this gig, kill it. It's always Joback, it always sells out. And then after this, you know, I'm gonna get busy. And then three weeks before the Black Song, the Ubab Cyril comes and goes, uh, fellow South African. Uh, so a lot of things have happened, but fuck, you know, on how you look at life, what's your outlook on whether religiously or spiritually or mentally, there's a lot of things that happen or take place for people to get to a certain place. It's just that some people are not aware. I mean, I know you had Tumi Morake here, mm, mm, mm. Um, and and uh, she's had her own journey, mm. and, and blah, blah, blah. But I mean, I don't know if you guys know, there was this accident Tumi was in with her yes, entire yes, family. Yes, yes, yes. So when we sit and talk, there are just things that happen, and you are just, some people obviously see things happen or have dreams that are almost like a movie. You know, it's like you're watching exactly what's going to happen or okay. what's happened or what's happening, whether with other people or yourself. Mm. So, but where I was going, between me and the hospital thing in 2017, so my con trying to control things, I accepted this, I can't control. This, I can do up to here, mm. sharp. Beyond that, there are things that if you know this one is not for you, you either walk away or you wait for the time that, okay, mm. now is the time to start with this thing or get involved in mm. blah, 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 blah. So mentally, I was in a good space. Yes. But the biggest thing was my now five-year-old. So 2020, he was two. Yes. Right? Everything I saw with him, I never saw with my firstborn and secondborn because wow. I was never home. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You're on the so road, yeah. I used to be every year, Cannes Film Festival, two weeks. U.S. L.A. Film Market, two weeks. Toronto Film Festival, two weeks. Devon Film Festival, two weeks. Then I still have gigs outside my Joburg overnight. Maybe another month or whatever. So there was a period where at least three, four months I was not home. Or and then the year's gone. Even in South Africa. Yeah, but it was normal, mm, right? Mm. It's going to gigs. It's doing... But then when my firstborn was born, then, you know, mm. you are here today, tomorrow there's a gig, you're mm, out of town. Mm, mm. When my daughter was born, my daughter was born on Mandela Day, on 18th July. Mm. And the Devon Film Festival always opens on the 18th July for like three years of her life. Mm. She was born, I held her, I gave her to the mother, I went to Devon. Mm. Following year, hello baby, happy birthday, I get on a plane, I'm going to the Devon Film Festival for mm. two weeks. Right. So there were all those things that during COVID, you're sitting with these people mm -hmm. and you're like, I I barely remember this one when he was the last the, one. Yes, age, yes. Saying right? the first word. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So if I take the money and the monetary gotcha. whatever out of the way, mm. for me personally, lockdown, my family, myself, mentally, spiritually. Beautiful. That's why now. If people are trying to fuck with me, mm. they would now almost physically have to try to do yeah. something. Yeah, you're on another level. But I'm, I'm on a totally different level. When it comes to this one, the mm. sheriff is outside. That The Jobek <laughs> City guy is here to to, to to switch off the word. Give him the phone. <laughs> hey, chief. Yeah. And then, okay, wait there. I'm going to the city of Jobek now. I'm going to pay the water. But so how you handle yeah. everything, mm. the letter of demand, mm. this one wants your house, your car, all of that shit boils down to, do you go into a panic? Mm. Do you start selling your stuff mm. or your house or, you know, which, I mean, maybe I'm lucky. So there's things my wife would be like, do you, sell my ring and I'm like hey hang on mm. or sell this sell. so there's also things that if you do decide to sell them there's some cash do you still but enjoy you don't want to 
You don't want to rush. Yeah. So let me tell you some of the emotional decisions I made. I, mean, I sold my Range Rover. I sold my BMW. Sure. But they were fully paid off. There was no reason, absolutely yes, yes. zero reason mm. to sell those cars. Mm. But at the time when things are happening, you know, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 the same thing of you are pulled over in a speed trap or you are speeding and you are over 160. You know you are going to jail. Mm. But you're not. it's not always going to end up mm. that way. So it's up to how you handle your yeah, situation. Yeah. Look, I know I'm over 160. Mm. It's, it's jail. There's no negotiation. But it doesn't necessarily mean you are immediately going to jail. You can either talk to the person or you can jo -jo. go with them, pay the bail mm. and still go home. Whatever. You know, if the courts are open, it's during the week. Is it a weekend? It's the outcome that's supposed to be what then maybe takes you into depression and all this shit. It can be delayed. So the best thing I've learned is patience and do nothing. That's why I do very little hmm. because I think about this decision I'm about to make. I don't have to make it today. Oof, beautiful, man. So phone calls, taking phone calls, do do asking, can you come to MACG? Yeah. I'm like, and then what? What are we going to talk about? <laughs> when I get to MACG... <laughs> That. You said you rejected uh, uh, the, the, the proposal before the invite, you know, but now you're like, yeah, let me chill with the guy. It's, it's not even rejecting it, right? It's, it's timing. So timing ah. to me is everything. Mm. And equally gigs, gigs that are paying money, gigs that are paying a lot of money, mm. gigs that are not also paying a lot of money. Mm. It's, it's availability, timing. but it, it it's, it's also revolves around my priorities with my own mental wellness. Mm. Um, and my my time, how I spend my time. I'll give you a simple example. I started playing golf uh, 2019. By the way, I, I wore my golf shoe. Just for us. <laughs> golf shoe. School golf shoe. Just for you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but anyway, I started playing golf. You didn't sell those ones. No? Okay. <laughs> They're coming out at the end of the month. Oh, yours. No, these are the Felskun golf shoe, David Gow golf shoe. Wow. Oh, wow. Out oh, shit. I oh, didn't know that. Everywhere. Oh, wow. Essentially, eventually all over the world. Wow, know. bro. That's major. But, but, so I started playing golf 2019, wow. right? I don't know if you guys play golf, but no. obviously you can play, uh, sometimes you can play by yourself if you're practicing, but golf, you typically play two to four people in a four ball. Even if there's 100 people, you can only be maximum four in mm. a group. But once you hit your ball, you are on your own to go find your ball, you know, come back to the green part, start again. So in that four hours, mentally, you are literally by yourself, nature, mm. the fresh air, mm. walk, yada, yada. You walk about seven, eight Ks per, per game. Mm. So mentally for me, what golf has done, it's changed my life, number wow. one, right? So I started playing with a Sunday school and then I play a Wednesday school. So Sunday lunch, my wife moved to dinner. I wake up in the morning, I go play golf. I aim to be home before dinner, right? And she understands what golf does for me. Wednesdays, I play another school called the Wednesday school. Unless there's a gig or I'm physically out of town. On Wednesday, this is what I do. I'm only available after a certain time. Gotcha. So then that comes with, is it an interview? Is, mm. it, a, is it something that can be moved to mm. a Tuesday or mm. a Thursday? Mm. You know, unless, of course, it's work or it's a gig or I'm traveling. Yes. Um, so then mentally and depression and you need to find something that you know. This is what I do for myself. Yeah. It's My kids know. Wednesday, they'll drop me at golf before they go to school. Mm. They know Sunday, unless I don't know there's a what. Someone's birthday, someone's child's birthday. I mean, one of my biggest fights with my wife was, you never want to come with me to my friend's uh, things, things or mm. my friend's child's birthday. And I'm like, nah, where I am in my life. Mm. On this day, this is what I'm doing. Mm. This wedding, that person's wedding, Kishap. <laughs> <laughs> and it's valid. It's valid. You can go with your friend mm -hmm. or, for you know, yeah. obviously there's close uh, mm. friends or family events and stuff. But even funerals, 
for me, a funeral is like people come in to confirm you're dead. Mm, mm. There's very few funerals. Like, no, think about it. How many people... How many people who go to a funeral knew the person? <laughs> no, it's not a lot. When they were alive, or came to see the person yeah. when they were alive. Yeah, true. It's that simple for yeah, me. Yeah, true. So if you are not here with me, checking on me when I'm alive, why are you coming to my funeral? funeral. It makes yeah. no sense, dog. Mm, to send yeah. off. Come and, on. And again, when, you know, maybe I'll write a book or something, but... Black people spend more money in death than they invest when a person is alive. Ooh, pause. It's a fact. Pause. Think of black funerals and the business around funerals. Hey, man. Pause. Hey, it, hey, it's hey. what keeps black people in debt, bro. There's so many other shit already to deal with. Bro. But there's things that we do to ourselves. Because people, people borrow what money. They have? they have cookies and people tea. People borrow That's money it. to bury someone yeah. who didn't leave them any money. <laughs> That's true. That makes no sense. That's There's it. nothing wrong with your family getting together. Yeah. Taking whatever box you can afford. Yes. Say a prayer, have it's a meal, rot, let go, it. let go of the person. And right? call it a night. Yeah. So, but that's again one of the things that Mina, there's a lot of things I've come to terms with and I've accepted that this makes no sense for me. But shout out to you, man. I don't know if you know about this, but when we were getting cancelled, um, David Carr reached out on 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 the on the DMs. Oh wow. And I was man. like, yo, man, give me a call. I just never got around it because yeah. it, was, it was a busy time. Yeah. It was a crazy yeah. time. But what what were you gonna say had I called? So let's look at Black Songly Comedy Show, okay? Black Songly has never had a sponsor. Yeah. 19 years. Mm. There might be one or two people maybe that put 50,000 or 100,000. But you have a brand called Plex Only in South Africa. You've got like managers, marketing managers and brand managers get very excited. It's a product that it shouldn't be, a, it should be a no-brainer to sponsor the show. Yeah. Then you go back to your white boss or the owner of the company or the board or the CEO and say, I want to put money in a show called Blacks, Blacks only. only. That's the end of discussion. That's the end of discussion. Which then, that's corporate, that's how corporate is set up in South Africa. And then you guys have a corporate sponsor also. And I'm going to go back to the sketch, comedy sketch we made with the Mandelas. It takes one person in South Africa to complain or write to the BCC, broadcast complaints, commission, yara, 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 and say, I don't like what this guy said. And then the whole company stops everything to make sure now they must deal with this relationship and separate and please the one or two people that have a problem, right? The only difference is Blacks only got to where it is by merit. Mm. I was a stand-up comic before I started getting involved, whether it's ANC politicians or knowing that person or knowing that person. So no one can say they, they gave me money to get here or they sponsored my show for five years to get here. So there's nothing to take from me, mm. right? Or you almost can't control. You can't wake me up and tell me I must come pay a bill at Cubana at sure. two in the morning. And yeah. now I must leave my wife sure. because you gave me a tender or you gave me something, right? I don't have those attachments. It also obviously means that no one is giving you shit or nothing 100%. is coming to you, mm -hmm. at least from, from that, um, that buy. So your biggest problem, obviously, you had a corporate sponsor, mm, number one, mm, mm. In, in your show. And luckily, you're on YouTube. So unless they obviously take you off the platform, yes, yes. you still have something and somewhere to go. And secondly, once you have the viewers and the following, it's... It's your following. It's your, you're not on TV. You're not on radio. You are not. These people are following you for who you are or what they know you of. Mm, mm. And I always compare my following. My following is small compared to other people. Sure. I've got 150,000 followers on Instagram. Right? Gotcha. Maybe 250 Facebook, 819 on Twitter, yada, yada, yada. But I hadn't been on TV for like 10 years when I did that show in... Uh, 2016, mm. 2017. Mm. So the people that follow me follow David Gao because it's David Gao. Mm. Not because I'm on radio or TV. Mm. So everyone else is following. It's pretty much the same people. So if you look at the formula from when Bonang started, live show, the music thing Friday, um, 
the Saturday Metro FM show, it's SABC, you know, we're making you. That's why they can come back also and be like, oh, we made you. Okay. Then for whatever reason, next, Boiti or Mini, yes. live, mm. Metro, Pell. Same trajectory. Yes. Metro. So there's a formula that everyone gets into a certain system, but then the followers are the same. Oh, yes, you're right. So whether you have 6 million or 5 million followers, or, or they are all either SABC1 viewers or they used to mm. listen to me. That's why when Generation, 15 years later, everyone is fired, two months later, nobody remembers half the cast. Sure. Mm. But they were on TV every day for 14, 15 years. Mm. So you understand? So radio, similarly. You're on radio every day, every morning, follow me on this. It's not your that. audience. No, it's not. It's borrowed. Ooh. And that's why when it comes to these influencer stories, a person with 10,000 followers who just does cooking can make more money than most people that have millions and millions of followers. Because mm. they, they, So equally, when people are cancelling you or you're not funny, yada, yada, you've never even been to a stand-up comedy show. You've never even bought a ticket. Mm. So one of the things I've done, and I've got footage of every Black Song comedy show, I sit on stage after the show. And I take a picture with whoever wants. So I've taken hundreds, if not thousands of pictures. Oof. So I know the people that come to my shows. Mm. I've seen them. You know your audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're totally different from an egghead on Twitter or X. Got you. Than, uh, mm. You understand? Mm. Than the, the, the trolls mm. on, on social media. Those are two totally different people. But again, mentally, you have to be at a certain level. To understand this. To understand this. And understand, oh, okay. I'm getting cancelled. We have 100,000 uh, subscribers or whatever. Sure. If you sell each of them a T-shirt for 10 rand or 20 rand or... So even in that, whatever million followers one has, if you can operate with 1% of people that buy your tickets, that buy your merchandise, mm. yeah. that buy your alcohol, mm. you are okay. Mm. You don't need to be loved. Mm. By everyone, everyone. Else, mm. on social media, especially because mm. those are two totally different worlds. There's people that live on social media and don't know shit about the real world or don't understand, mm. Mm. and they also overestimate or, or they 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 think they have so much influence mm. when it's actually this much. Because mm. once you leave Twitter or you switch off your phone, none of that nonsense matters. The real world kicks no. in. No, the real world. Yeah. You still have to yeah. deal with the real world, mm. right? So, I mean, I don't know wh what you guys, how much you went through what and eventually how you got out of it mm. or how it ended just from you think, okay, phew, that's over. Mm. But if you think about it, you think of Fed Joe, it's never going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's never going to stop. Yeah. I was somewhere and um, I think I was at the Net Bank Golf Challenge and I bumped into Montle Makanya. Mm. Uh, I think now he's at City Press. He used to be the editor of Sunday Times, blah, blah, blah. And he says to me, do you remember the joke you used to tell? And what would happen if you told that joke today? So I used to have this joke, which it's a fact. There's so many African countries where it is illegal to be gay. Mm. Mm -hmm. From your Ghana, Nigeria, mm. even Uganda. Botswana, you can't openly, mm. you know, Uganda. Yeah. So I'll do this joke and I'll say in Ghana, it's a punishable offense. You can get up to five years in prison. And then I stop and then I go, I don't know if that's the best punishment for that crime. I used to do this like maybe 10 or more than 10 years ago. Oh, you can't do that, no. Oh. But that's the thing. So who's getting offended? Because there's an organization or there's a journalist that's on behalf of <laughs> everyone else. Mm -hmm. Those people didn't like that joke. Yeah. So you look at the Chappelle thing. Yes, And yes. he talks about a person that he met mm. who used to heckle him, mm. who used to say, I'm funny, put me on stage, yada, yada, who, you know, used to talk about themselves and being a transvestite. But everyone else who has a problem is everyone else. They've never even met the person. Mm -hmm. and they're getting angry on their behalf. Mm -hmm. But going back to you guys saying, you know, I tried no, to No, but it's crazy that you mentioned even that, no? Even uh, I spoke to him mm -hmm. through that time, right? Mm -hmm. When they nominated him and then they unnominated him. There's for, a, there's an interview Fat Joe was saying, and he was like, um, South Africa, we just come out of apartheid, you know, like 20, 30 yeah. years ago, whatever it was. So for so long, we've been oppressed and couldn't um, um, express our views. And exercise our freedom. And yeah. exercise our freedom. Now, we're at an age where we have fought for that freedom. It is here. But with all these things that are happening, they're trying to take us back mm. to now you can't say this. Mm -hmm. 
which is equivalent to apartheid, if well, you think about it. You're sheep. You know, like you know what I mean, sheep. Penduga? Yeah, yeah, he said it was a tembe yes, yes. So, yeah. so going back to the fear, when I said, I've never had fear of not having money. Like, I know I can make money. I've always known how to make money, mm. right? So that's not the issue. The how or when is one, one of those things then, the when I might have to accept, it's not up to me. So whether I'm working on a deal every day for a year or five years, and when it's going to pop or start paying, I'm not in control. I'm no, I can only do up to here, right? So if I didn't have any debt and there's no bank that's trying to come after me or my car or school that's going to kick out my child, and, 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 and you become a different person. Mm. So when you then free yourself, and I advise a lot of comedian guys that I, that I used to advise or whatever, if you can say no to a gig, regardless of how much it pays, you are halfway there. So, yes, you need the money. You lose money when you say no. But the moment you can, someone says, we'll pay you this much, come and do this, that, that, and you're like, mm, not for me. You are halfway there because everyone lives around the fear of not having money or not being able to survive or pay for things. And, 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 and. So whether it's do this TV show, this is the idea, and you are doing it because it's paying well. But you know when you go there or when you wake up tomorrow. I mean, we've done corporate gigs. Not that they were a bad idea when you offered the gig. You arrive at a gig, this is the setup. Maybe people are eating, they're not listening. <laughs> we do corporates paying this much, bro. I would leave there and I'd... That money, it's like you're dirty. So the quicker you finish that money, the better. <laughs> Just from how it was the one of the worst fucking gigs. Yeah, I get it. Ever. Yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you feel, feel yeah, 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 yeah. Sense yeah. of emptiness. Yeah. So there's certain things that for us to be free, mm. you know, um, debt, because uh, it's it's a sto- so you, you must read a book it, how to be a stoic. <laughs> or, or text Rob Dudu, Dudu will text it to me. <laughs> oh, I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember. When his done, three years yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I remember him saying. <laughs> so minimalism. Yes. Yes. David, that's the book. Yeah. Nailed it. Yeah. Nailed so, it. I mean, bra. I've got the same four, or five pens: black, navy, cream white. Golf shirts, now I don't even want to buy stuff because I've got golf shirts or golf-sponsored clothes mm. that I don't need anything else. I might have a nice top, a nice sweater, or shoes, or whatever, right? Mm. But I'm also at a point where every now and then I'm giving away clothes. Mm. I've got tons of Gucci stuff and yada, yada, that. This bag is probably more than 10 years old. Jeez. And now original. because of all the fake stuff that's out there, <laughs> people wearing... <laughs> Gucci, Bal- Balenciaga, head to toe. LV, from head to toe, five pieces, and I'm, I'm like, oh, what is that? You know? So, so there's things that most of us, honestly, we don't need, right? Mm-hmm. But some people, for them, they do a certain thing. Maybe also to answer your depression question. Mm. For some people to snap out of it, maybe you wake up and you dress nicely. Yeah, true. And shower, Makes dress you nicely, take yourself out, or find the thing that Gives you. So for some people, then it's material things. Mm-hmm. It's how they are seen, posing with this on the socials. A black only. It's back. The nineteenth one, right? So nineteen years. But nineteen we used years. To do three, bro. four shows a year. In this Jordan. is insane. Like, Fucking hell, man. Two a year. Round of applause to Brad Dave. Nineteen years. Not over hundred. Not over 100 shows. No sponsor. So almost no two hundred. Fucking so, sponsor. So we do two or three in Joburg a year. We do maybe two in Durban, two in Cape Town. A year, mm. especially before COVID, right? So that's almost seven, eight shows. Why um, the name uh, Blacks Only? Was to rip off the old apartheid laws, Suarte's Net, Blanket's Net. Whites uh, Only no by blacks, the bench. Whites Only, yeah. Mm. That's, that's where the idea and the name for the idea came from. But it was to basically get black comedians to have a platform. That's why it's set up the way it is. There's a running joke of a one white comedian <laughs> every show. The token white guy. Yeah. Chris Forrest Makaku. Like, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. Chris Forrest, Skulk has been on a couple. Of, Jimmy Carr has been on Black Song. Oh, Jimmy Carr. Yeah. I mean, he had his own show, sold out, left the show quickly, drove to Black Song. Nice. 
And uh, who you got this year? So who, who's on the lineup this year? Mark Lottering, Tats and Gonzo. Um, oh, love yeah, Celeste and Dooley. Oh, it's all good. Uh, Tapelo Mamecha, uh, Momo Tebe, uh, Mojak Lehoko. He's brilliant. And Alan Committee, you know, another white cat. We, we, we were doing stuff together. Then I got my one man shows at the Lyric. Man. So Black's only 7th October, mm. Monte Casino. I've got my one man shows 19, 20, 21, 22 October at the Lyric. And 13, 14 October, I'm in Port Elizabeth at the Savoy Theatre. So I'm going to start doing a bit more of my one-man shows. I just want to record stuff and send it out there. All right, before you go, let's play a game, man. We're going to play One Must Go. I'm going to give you comedians' names. You must tell me which one. One Must Go. go. Yeah, One Must Go. Okay. Are you ready? Sure. Trevor Noah, Eugene Koza. Uh, I can't take a shot like Kevin Hart <laughs> and, and the drinks champs. <laughs> no, 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 no cop out. No cop out. That's a cop out. Cop out. But it's just I, a I game. Know you don't drink. It's just a game. Yeah. It's just a game. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a game. <laughs> Trevor Noah, Eugene Koza. Ashifa <laughs> Shaba. <laughs> 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 Who are you going no, for? Who must go? Uh, uh, if, if we're playing a game, Trevor. Must Trevor. Go, yeah. No but ways. I mean, no, I mean, if we're playing a game, mm. um, Trevor, has, Trevor has his own world and, and planet type yes. thing, you know, where, where he is. So if we're working on something and we're like Eugene or Trevor, I'd say let's. Let's go with Eugene because there's still more to be done. Yeah. Right. Or he can still do um, much more. We had um, Eugene at our Sunbait event. He fucking yeah. murdered it. No, we, we did a gig together somewhere, maybe last year. Oh, and then he did Black Songly also. Mm. I think one Black Songly last year. Uh, it's good to see him back, you know? All right, um, cool. Even in life, I feel like you guys are almost at a oh, yeah, same Oh, yeah, same. Because you know yeah. what you're saying now, now, that's the reason why he walked away from NetBank. Yes. With all that money. Yes, yeah. He yes, just yes. didn't want to go yes. there because yeah, of the yeah, yeah, yeah. environment and he just walked away from yeah. it. Look, everybody goes through it. It's also, it's like the bullshit that people say money doesn't buy happiness. Mm. Until you've had money that shows you money's not going to buy happiness. Mm. That shit makes no sense to you. 100%. Yeah. So everybody will relate based on their circumstances. Yeah. Mpo Pops, less than two ladies. Wow. One must go. One must go. Bro. Ah, guys, these are people I found, man. <laughs> <laughs> these people you, come that's from. You must tell us. We yeah, have the authority. Yeah. Who must go? Uh, Pops must go. Ah! <laughs> Not my boy Pops. No man, Pops. Pops has grown nicely. So yeah. let me tell you how Pops lost. So you think you're funny. So it's the finals. It's I don't remember who has left, but obviously Pops, Celeste, mm. and Hesh, and we bring them to a hotel in Joburg, right? Or they stay in one hotel. When we take everyone from all over the country, Pops came from Joburg. They stay in this place in Runbeck, and we're shooting the show wherever. Chris Mapani and Chris Forrest were the mentors on the show. So they sit with you every day before we record, oh, yes, go over yes, your yes, material. Yes, yes. On the last day, on the final episode, Pops goes home to go and fetch a jacket he wants to wear. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Some four or five button African dictator vibe, but I don't know. I don't know if we'll find that footage. So Pops leaves. The, yes, yes. the area yeah. where everyone is here. You can't leave. Oh. We're shooting a tour. We have a production. Yes. We've got times where... And essentially, you know, he's almost late for the recording and blah, 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 blah. Mm. So I knew he wasn't ready mm -hmm. for the shit that's going to come with. You win this show. You get to perform on Black Song. David Gow manages you and, 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 and. Because for me, that's it's always about the person, mm. what the person either becomes or... So it's like giving someone a car and yes. they're not ready to drive. Mm. They're going to end up in an accident. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Right? So that's how Pops... I think he became second. Second yeah, yeah, or said, third. So you yeah, said yeah, second yeah, yeah, yeah. earlier on. Mm. And uh, I mean, obviously there's also the audience uh, voting. Yes, it's Anne Hirsch, that white girl killed them. They, she trapped them. Because eh? mm. obviously you do a bit... The audience vote whatever, whatever. You come back, you do another bit. 
um, you know, keeping it fresh and yada, yada, yada. And yes, N. Hirsch that day was just... But we remember fine. Pops now. I don't even know who that N. Hirsch is. So Pops even started going to stand-up comedy clubs after, mm. after losing on the show because oh. he wasn't a comedian oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Pops wasn't a stand-up comedian before so you think you're funny mm. fucking he's killing it now bro oh, no he wasn't murder. yeah so he's, he's, he's on a nice he's, he's on a nice journey especially with the TV the Comedy Central roast with Kanye and, hey. and now the, and he also got checked in as well remember and now checked the, in yeah for depression remember when he was telling us when we oh yeah yeah Pops oh, he Pops. told me he went away but I didn't know what it yeah, 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 yeah. yeah yeah but you see all that stuff but I promise you guys, it's the noise it's the in noise. this industry. Yeah. So me, as long as I'm waking up in this town, I'm taking my kids to school, soccer, gymnastics, and I, you know, weekends, I feel car show. Yeah. That's beautiful. Because That's you know nice. why? Living, because man. celebrities think they think there are celebrities everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, people that are known or well known. Like, if if an engineer and an accountant can drive their kids to school yeah. every day, who are you? Um, they building bridges and shit. And who are you? Buildings. Making a real change. Just because you are more well known or mm. you're famous, mm. it doesn't mean you now can't. Because mm. some people don't do those things because they believe their status, they can be seen. Doing those things. Oh, so, uh, no, no, no. Life. so it's like, yeah, it's like a status. It's like a what the fuck. So if you think of royal families and being ah, royal, ah yes, you are told you can't, can't make your own yes. bed. You can't do this. You must be washed by other people. And, Imagine. And, and so stuff like that. What you can do for yourself, if you try and remain as normal as possible. Yes, the circumstances. Maybe then you need security. Or you so huge you can't just. But there's bigger celebrities that do these things, man. Like that rock up by yeah. themselves, yeah. no bodyguards and yada yada. Mm-hmm. Unless there's a ser- serious threat against your life, right? Uh, next one, Skumba versus the who's the Marinka guy? Mashavel. Mashavel. Oh, yes. Yes. Ah, uh, Papao can go, man. Ah, uh, Papao. Papao can go. <laughs> But these are guys that I, I really love. I won't lie. Bro, uh, Skumba um, is Venek, right? When you started, is it true that comedians could only speak in English? Like, before you, there was... Well, the only market was white people. Yeah, so yeah, you couldn't yeah. do Venek. You remember, I performed straight two years without... With just, to just white people. That's why I started comedy Blackout and then Black Song. Mm, beautiful, man. So you almost didn't have an outlet. That's, right? for That's why I wanted to do Black Song, because I had all this material that I wanted to do. To like and now everyone's and doing vernac, like yeah. everybody's so, doing So vernac. if, if this country was was proper, right? And like I said, if they had the support that you would have, if a comedian is gonna fill up a stadium in South Africa, it's gonna be a black or a Venex speaking comedian. Yeah, I can guarantee 100%. you that, and I'll yeah. have everything to do with it. Kevin Hart, Eddie Murphy. Um Eddie, Eddie is. Eddie has had his moments. Has had Eddie his time. must go. Eddie has had his time. But Eddie walked so Kevin Hart can run. But that's the thing. The I don't know what you base your game on, but <laughs> hey, you should be <laughs> <laughs> You should be saying um let me I'll think of an example yes, yes. Of, of who you are chucking. Yeah. And and also they're all comedians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, I met Kevin when he was here in Fab, you know, um, and and some of his team as well. Um, and he's actually trying to do stuff in Africa or in South Africa nice, or find nice. a way how we can, you know, do something. Mm. Or at least use his influence yes, to, to yes, see how, we, how everybody can, can be out there. Dope guy. And I mean, I know some of his team... Um, it's just an all-round cool guy, you know, um, trying to do things and trying to change the world uh, within whatever it is that he's doing. And the big difference with him, I think, is that he's not waiting to his career is slowing yes, down or yes, while yes. he's still in this thing. You know, it's Laugh like, Out Loud Network, he started, now he's doing stuff with Peacock and, boom, and boom. all the stuff mm. he's doing. So, so it's quite dope. Mm. I don't know who else you guys uh, want chucked. No, no, no. That's it. That's it. The game's done. 
Penduka, any question for Prate? Yeah, earlier on, man, you said that um, marketing managers obviously come to Blacks Only, experience the magic, go back to their big bosses, and then they reject it. I'm taking it, it's because of the name. Yeah. What made you persistent in the name, even though you could change the name and still achieve the same thing, which is putting Black comedians on? Because the fans... Because of the people that come to watch the Black Song shows or that buy tickets to my shows matter more than anyone else. Mm. I take a huge financial knock, but that show, you can have all the sponsorship in the world. If people come and they think this is nonsense or this shit is not funny, there's, there's no show. There's no show. Right? So for me, my audience has always come first. Lovely. Mm. In the decisions that I, that I make. But Dave, we got to let you go, man. We could do this for Wait. hours. Bro, yeah. 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 Thank you so much, Prate. Last question: Who gets more ass, DJs or comedians? DJs. Yes. Yeah. I used to have a picking DJs. order. I used to have a picking order and say, it's soap, soapy actors, yes, soccer players, yes, DJs, yeah, and then I'll make up other shit and I say comedians. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they, they you know why? Laugh to laugh. No, they you say. know why? Most people who come to comedy are couples. Oh, yeah. Oh, I promise you. Yes, I promise you. In the years that oh. I've been doing comedy, you almost can't go by yourself. So yeah. it's always two tickets. Or, But Black Songly has like a lot of girls nights out, mm. four or five girls mm. and, and, and that come. But it's because it's like that event where people would want to go maybe once a year yeah. or when it's happening. Right. Yeah. So it's got that show me to your birthday. Let's or, rock. Yeah. Let's go to yeah, yeah, Black yeah, Song. Yeah, 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 yeah. But typically to go to a comedy show, it's mostly it's couples. Date it's mm. mostly date nights and, and, and yeah, or couples or so and also remember for me, stand up has always been my thing. It was never T V mm. or radio. So I I didn't have a groupie thing that was yes. attached to me. Mm. You know, I mean, I got married 16 years ago. I've been Damn. with my wife 18 years. Fucking hell, bro. So if maybe things have changed now, mm. then I wasn't in the mix with uh, groupies or girls or, mm. you know. Um, Make some noise for Prate. Yeah, Let's fill up uh, Black's Only 7th of October, yeah? 7th October, Monte Casino tickets at uh, Ticket Pro, uh, PE Savoy Theatre, Kabeja. Kabeja. Uh, 13, yes. 14 October, tickets at Cricket, and then tickets at Compu Ticket for the Lyric Theatre, 19 to 22nd uh, September. Just search David Gow. I've got tickets somewhere that are <laughs> that selling need to be sold. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Podcast and chill, we are here, man. Jeez. Boom. <laughs> Welcome to Black Excellence. Do not fear, for if you do, just sip on some grandeur. And if you still do, ask ourselves, what would Mapapunzi do? Parama chilla, itlesha lefiki. Bungo yig, even when they ask you, how sabi in, do not fear. For if you do, just say, Anistivi. This is the medicine of censorship. This is the pill. Which one is that one? Podcast and chill.